This is Infection, the Survival Podcast, recorded live on Tuesday, July 26th, 2016, episode 80. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Infection, the Survival Podcast. Infection is your source for the latest information on survival video games. We bring you the latest news, reviews, updates, and more each and every week. My name is Nick Craig, at Nicholas M. Craig is my Twitter, infectionpodcast.com is the website. Joining me, Brian with Beard Oil Aldridge. Hello, Brian. Yes. <laughs> and, and thank you, Gravity Beard, for recommending, because I almost got beard wax, and he was like, no, don't get, don't get beard wax. So I got beard oil, and I've been happy with it. Um, as I was saying before, I don't have it in today just because I have hockey tonight, and beard oil and hockey don't mix well um, with sweat and everything, so... I just figured I'd, I'd go natural today. Um, so if you want to find me at Boise Computer on Twitter, you're more than welcome to go to my my blog, which is Byte of Tech, B-I-T-E of tech.com. On there is links to my Google Plus and everything else, which who uses Google Plus anymore? Nobody, absolutely um, nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I go check the feed every once in a while. It's like, this is all just useless information. Um, Repost from and- Reddit. <laughs> Yeah. If you want to go to infectionpodcast.com, uh, it's a great way to join us on Discord. We've got 18 people online right now, um, 50 people that are offline. So it's a great place to kind of join up and maybe play some video games. Oh, let me also. Uh, yeah, yeah. Let me talk. So, Discord, we I added up. Uh, this was a recommendation from Langun. Um, and I saw somebody in there, the channel the other day, is uh, we added a Survivor Radio as a bot to our discord and it sits in its own channel called music. Um, and it's streaming a, uh, a video game stream, uh, by the name of no life radio. So, um, it's, which kind of a video game stream database. There's thousands and thousands of game intros, cutscenes, like all those little, you know, m- all the music you hear in games. So if you're, if you're interested in hearing some stuff like that, you can hop in the discord, the channels in there 24 uh, seven. There's a help channel. If it stops working on how to set it back, back up and getting up and running. So check it out. Some nice gaming. Yeah, music. We'll keep it around for a few weeks. If nobody uses it, we'll turn it off, but we'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. And you could always change up what's on there a little well, bit. Too. Somebody recommended trying to put an infection on there. So I think this week I'm going to work on setting up a stream to get the infection live streaming in discord audio only. Maybe for people in, on, on like random, random episodes. No, no, no. I like mean, live for the from... show, like live for the show. Oh, I see. So, so people could listen. It'll be music discord. all the time, except for, you know, infection. So pipe that in so they can't be listening to music when they're supposed to be listening. Yeah, I'll to put the it show. in the general channel. I'll put it in every channel so that they can't possibly not. <laughs> <laughs> you can't sit there and enjoy a video game. They have to listen to yeah, us. Yeah, you have to listen. It's uh, it's mandatory. That's the way to do it. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what's going on with Discord. And also our uh, Steam group. Uh, I yes. encourage you if you if you're not a member of our Steam group, on the upper right of our website, infectionpodcast.com, there is a link to our Steam group. It's a great way to connect up with some of the the many people that are that are part of that. I mean, got hundreds of people in there. So if you're looking for people that play a specific game, that's an excellent place to look. Now, um, this. Uh, week's game is going to be rust um and i just found out that i have to work a wedding so i will not be here so i missed hurt world i'm missing rust i'm missing all of the games i wanted to be here for but (laughs) life goes on so um, well i should i should be there uh, so landgun will be there uh, as well gonna be running it um yeah so that's what's going on with uh game of the week so we'll see a rust friday night 9 30 and uh yeah, there you go. Hopefully you guys uh, enjoy that. And Brian, of course, we'll have a recap next week for you. Yep. Um, let's see, Brian. You purchased a game that came out yes. today that you said you didn't want to purchase because you didn't. Yeah. I, if I remember the quote, I was like, I, was up I don't want air, it yeah. to be spoiled or something like yes. that. And I came home. I didn't want, I didn't want a partial story to so what did spoil. You get? So I got We Happy Few because I read that they don't have the storylines in there at all. It's not that they're incomplete. Like they have the intro, you know, like pretty much the cut scene and all the things that get you into the world that you saw in the video, um, that that initial play video, but they don't have the character storylines in the game at all. So for me, that was good enough. Like I didn't didn't want to play through a story that was going to possibly change. And I didn't want to play through a story that, wasn't going to be complete. Like all of a sudden it was going to end. And that was my biggest worry with getting it was having an incomplete or storyline that they ended up, you know, changing halfway through. So 
Um, I may, when they start putting out the storyline, and that's the thing is, I, I looked into the game a little bit now that there was more information about it. Um, and it's pretty much a survival game that, and I, I, I feel like I've barely touched the surface. So I played it for a while today and I feel like I've barely touched the surface because they have your, you know, we, I don't remember, know how many people remember the video, but they have like the joy pills that you take that kind of change your whole perception of reality. Yeah. Um, in the game, I haven't taken any joy pills. Like you see there, um, where, you know, like she looks happy and everything. And then you kind of see this dirty other version. Um, I've gone through and just made sure that through the whole game, I haven't taken any joy pills. So hmm. I think that there's some whole side, like when I walk through the town that it would look a different way. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> that I've only seen like the dirty areas and it, it's still a lot of fun. Like you run around and kind of gathering and, um, and it's procedurally generated, which I was kind of surprised about. Like the, the world is procedurally generated. Um, I figured it would be something they built, but I guess that way it changes. And I don't know if that's, like the main town, if there's parts that are the same, like in the center, but uh, this would be, I'll keep playing it and we'll just have to see kind of how it unfolds because so far it looks like it's going to be really good, um, it, but it's a straight up survival game. You know, you go through, you gather things, you build, there's a crafting system, um, but it's got kind of a fun, very depressing story that goes on top of it. Yeah. Um, so, I was going to pick it up and then I just realized I wasn't going to have time to buy it and play it before the before the show after I got home from work. So I will yeah. um, I'll pick it up either some point this week or next week. I'm not going to buy it if I'm not going to play it right. I'm going to buy it when I'm ready to, you know, play for yeah. for an hour or so, a few hours. So we'll see. But um, it's out there now. You can get it. It's twenty nine ninety nine. Remember, it is early access and it's also yeah. available on PlayStation and Xbox. So you can get it on all three platforms. It's part of uh, Xbox Live's, uh, I don't remember what they're calling their early access program, but I saw a tweet from them today that, that is available on their platform, and it's available on Sony's PlayStation as well. So you can definitely get it, um, multiple platforms, check it out, and uh, let us know what you're thinking of it. Um, I saw you don't yeah, play to what, like, you see, it said you played like, like an hour maybe? I, I, you said it, it said it, you played 0.5 of an hour, but sometimes that's steam. No, well, I totally went in, inaccurate. I went in, I went in a little bit. I, I went in two times. So I, I, I went one hour oh, so okay. far, exactly. Hmm. Um, and so, yeah, it's a procedurally generated world, meaning that everyone's experience is going to be unique. And that's the thing is it doesn't look procedurally generated. I mean, they did a really good job of Which is good. making making the landscape. Like when you're walking through, um, it's not obviously like, oh, this is just a computer, you know, putting all this stuff together. It looks like a normal looking town. Um, so it has, and it has a, a range of difficulties it says. So uh, you can make it a harder game, an easier game. Permadeath. It, I've been playing only permadeath so far as well. So when you die, you're, you're when dead. I die my character. So that's, so that's why I haven't really progressed super far is uh. because if you starve to death or, you know, somebody hits you. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. It, but you can turn that off. Yeah. You know, I don't think I like that to be honest. With, I mean, Okay, call you don't me. like permadeath? No, I mean, call, say say what you want. It's just, and I don't want to. I don't. I don't like. I don't like grinding. I just. I don't. I don't like. Like, oh, you make a you 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 make you make a wrong turn, and now you've got to restart the entire game from the start. Like, well, and okay, that so that kind of bugs me. I think why one reason why I'm doing it this way is because. Be, because not all the stories in there, there's, I don't know how much of an end game there is. I don't want to hit the end and realize what the limitations are. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so I'd rather have it to where I die and kind of have to grind through again instead of finding, Oh, here's where they have reached as far as programming and designing this. Um, cause that makes it feel, cause you know how, when you beat a game or you get to, you know, you hit some limitation and then all of a sudden it's like, ah, oh, this, you know, I don't really feel like playing this game anymore. Yeah. Um, I don't want that to happen. So, I'm I'm just doing it on permadeath and kind of makes me push until they release the actual game. And then I find out what the actual limitations are of the game. I just don't want to run around and be like, Oh, well, this is all I can do. You know, um, I want it to be, to, to seem fun for longer. Um, but yeah, it's a straight up survival. So if you go and we'll have a link in the show notes, actually, I put a link in there. So if, if you're looking to order or you just go on steam, look up, we happy few 29 99. It's not a bad price. So this is my thing. It's not a bad price, but, I feel like so I I'm not sure what they're going to do with the development but 
are the, is it just going to be the version you have now? They're going to work on it internally, and then they're going to release a version at the end. Or are they going to be doing updates and adding the story in throughout the early um, access program? Yeah, I think that they're going to be adding it. So, um, so I I don't know. Like uh, that that's a good question. I think right now it says you have access to three of five islands, right? Um, so not okay. all the areas are open yet. And I think that then I think I don't think it's going to be like, OK, you get to play this and then all of a sudden it's going to be complete. Uh, it's going to be between six and 12 months that it's going to be in early access. So that's the amount of time that they're doing it. But they're going to be adding in um, more cut scenes and, and so narrative ideas. This is, this is kind of where I was going with this. If you want more of a finished product, it may be wise for you to wait six mm -hmm. months to get it while it's still early access. If you're but, a person who only plays through something once and then you never touch it again, you may not be happy with see, this because there, there, there's a whole bunch of storyline and, and different options that you won't have the option for, of if you play it through right now. That's kind of my, that's kind of where I have this issue for, for you. I definitely don't see that being an issue, but I know, and, and personally myself, I'm kind of this way. Um, you know, I buy this now and I play it. What am I, you know, let's say it takes me. You said the none of the storyline is in. Only the initial, up to the point of you being able to really control your character and being out in the world. Okay, so what, like the four hours, three hours, maybe if the story. No, the, I mean I've already played through. Like it was the first like fifteen minutes. Oh, so it's already so you're now you're just wandering around the world. Now I'm <laughs> in the world and I can craft things and find things. Yeah. See, so I, I don't know. I feel like so that's... there's more storyline after mm. that that I'm not seeing, and some of these cutscenes that you see are I think from that story that they haven't released yet. Yeah. Um, you know, you can run around and, and like do things, but there's not going to be a, a trigger point that says, all right, now, you know, unfold this part of the story. Like that's not in. And one thing though, to keep in mind is they're saying that the price is lower during early access. Like right now it's twenty nine yeah. ninety nine. Once it's released, they're raising the price. It is. And that's what I'm saying. Maybe if you're like me, maybe you time this so that you buy it in four months once they have you know a decent chunk of the story added because in. it definitely won't be done before six months so they said six to 12 months it'll be in early access yeah. so at least if or buy it buy it before they release or buy it now and just don't play it that's what i might do yeah. i might buy it just to guarantee that they don't hike the price up i won't even install it. i'll just wait till i'm you know till yeah. we follow the development and, and see what happens with it because without a story i mean it's like like really like, like you're pro you've hit like what you can do in the game like what you're well, craft I, stuff. I mean i don't even know like i can craft stuff but there's no story, there's so it's of... what are you gonna do? Just craft stuff and walk run around, around and... and just yeah, run around and see what happens. That's the thing is yeah. I don't. That's what I was saying. I don't even know the limitations yet. I don't exactly. know like what I can do, what I can't do, and that's kind of the fun part of it right now, uh, of playing that. But as soon as I find out where the limits are, it's gonna be like oh, this isn't nearly as fun, and I have to wait for the the rest. Um, so you know, it's it, and I don't know as far as multiplayer or anything I, I think it's a wasn't it a single player i believe it's single player only oh. yeah so yeah it's single player so this is pretty much just you playing in your own world um you know so if you want to play through it once yeah i mean you're just, just wait yeah exactly the i'm kind of comparing this i know it's not the same game style but to firewatch a kind of a play buy it i think that's how it will be but see that's a this is where but the, this is where you run into a problem there's got to be a lot, and I mean a lot of content, because you can, if Firewatch was a $20, $25, maybe $30 game at full full yeah. value, they can't charge $60 for a game that's got, you know, eight hours of playtime. I mean, that's kind of... That, that's, now, that's, one thing that's I did notice, dollar the one thing I noticed value. that was really early access is, like, I could go up and punch NPCs and then, like, run on the other side of a door, and they kind of all would gather around that door you know and they wouldn't come in so th yeah and like that's the issue with h1z here. like h1z1 had that issue with the zombies originally if you shut all the doors the yeah. zombies couldn't open them yeah that's so that must be something well and this one on. like even the door is open and like if you kind of stand in the right way like one of them will come through the door but that's one thing with the pathing and and the npc behavior they're gonna have to work on that to make it toward that's more of a threat because i could pretty much punch punch out 15 people if i just kind of use doorways to my advantage that's a problem so, but that's, you know, that's all stuff. This is their first early access release. Um, they've been working on it for a while. This was a Kickstarter originally. Yeah. 
And so, and so this is their first early access release on Steam. Um, you know, in another year out, it, it's definitely very well polished. Like, the world feels better than H one Z one for sure. Um, just as far as like everything works, like everything is laid out and it's procedural. The fact that they were able to pull that off shows that they really know what they're doing. So we'll we'll see. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see the updates and hopefully it's not something to where you know six months from now they put out the one update and. I'm not going to have anything new for six months. Yeah, that, that's an but issue. We'll find out. Exactly. So <clears throat> uh, I guess we'll keep you up to date with what's going on with that. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. So this, uh, we had a new skin hit the test server. Um, yes. The King of the Kill test server. They've been doing a lot. They've been doing a lot of the King of the Kill test server updates. Um, and I've got a recommendation for all of you uh, H1Z1 fans. Follow H1Z1 uh db it's at it's at h1z1db dot dot net on twitter he's got some type of automated system that tweets out every time that there's a new test server update for just survive or king of the kill um so if you're really really interested in hearing like it doesn't have details of the what you know what the updates are but if you're interested like hey when's a new update coming out um it's got everything in here the change id the build id and and what game it's for so can recommend that um, cause that's how, you know, this was in one of these and there was one a little bit earlier today as well. So this is the Ronin crate. Um, yes. and there's some controversy with crates and skins and stuff that we'll get to, um, after this next now, Brian, I'm just going to kind of show the, the, this is the thumbnail of what is inside of this, this crate. And it looks like the first half, they totally missed the mark, but it seems like about halfway through. They kind of got it together. So I would say yeah, about and, half and of the thought... items are this, like, weird, they're calling it a, 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 a Neko -chan. Chan, which is, like, <clears throat> all, like, uh, spacey, psychedelic with, the, the hoodie has a hat, uh, cat Cats on wearing it. Glasses. Cat wearing sunglasses. Ooh. That kind of look. Um, but in the, in, it's so weird because there's stuff like that. You've got a cat wearing sunglasses with this background being space on a hoodie, and then four items down from that, you have a heavy assault military backpack, and then next to that, a sniper laminated body armor, which is like what real get, deal. What if you get body stuck armor. with the Neko Chan R380, like the most pointless gun in the game? I think you win the skin of a purple space themed 380. Yeah. I mean, that, you know. This is the thing is they, they put in some of those skins that they were pushing before. So the sniper outfit, the sniper body armor, the sniper helmet, which this was because there was so much backlash on the sniper having a hat, right? Rather than a helmet. Yeah. This is the sniper helmet. So they've they've backed off of that. I know that aesthetically they want to have the sniper wearing a hat because that's what they see in the movies and that's what they feel like would really a sniper would be wearing a hat. That's what they I mean, but, that's typically what they do wear. Yeah. But that's the thing is, you're, there aren't places for you to be a sniper in this game. Exactly. Like There's no hill for you to works. sit. I can think of one, maybe two locations where you could be a sniper, but they're not really sniper spots. They're no. just high high vantage points. They're and really, you could put you could put a watchtower in your base, but still, like you yeah, want to have up. a helmet because the part of you that ex is exposed in this type of a game is your head. This game is not realistic See, enough where you should be worried about. Oh well, hey, I gotta have a. You should be more worried about well, having a helmet you're, you're on. Not exactly. be, you're not gonna be. You're not gonna be like like in Daisy. Daisy was was really nice because as a sniper, you could hide up on a hill, and someone would have to walk right up on you to be able to see that you were there. Yeah, um, that's one thing that I really liked about that. This game is not like that, so you're not gonna be getting all your camo on and hiding in some place and just trying to be agile to be exactly. able to move around. So what do we um, got so, here? Yeah, so they got they have that sniper outfit. They put in the heavy assault military backpack, which which is the black backpack with kind of red highlights on it yep. um, to match the rest of that outfit. Then they have the shogun 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 body armor, which is kind of like a is it supposed to be like a, a Chinese? I, I, it's kind of like some type of like warrior thing. It's got the, yeah, the like a shogun warrior yeah, from exactly. You know, kind of like a samurai sword yeah, type of exactly. a thing. Exactly. Like, yeah, with that kind of style. That's got that kind of ribbed style with a bunch of plates. Okay, so is this together. a hint at 
a skin for the machete that looks like a samurai sword. No, I they, and there shouldn't be a hint. They should have put it in this one because it's so stupid that they wouldn't put it in this crate if that was because the isn't plan. that is because I, I thought we saw teases of that a long time ago of a samurai sword in the game. I have no clue, and I, it, it would have been a long time ago. But that that would be the thing that would make sense with this if you're going to do this, like have the big reveal of a skin for and because you don't even have to put in its own weapon. Just yeah. put a skin on a machete. Exactly. And say, all right, here's your samurai sword to go along with your shogun body armor um, so that you can be you can be a warrior yeah. <laughs> or whatever. Mm -hmm. Instead, they put in a nine millimeter skinned Asian samurai warrior handgun, which doesn't make any sense to me. Like, well, they added the bow, which kind of fits it a little bit. The bow is in there. Um, yeah, but it is, it's a nice recurve bow, but I the just, rest of it there's... just doesn't match it. There's Match no, I mean, it nothing really matches at all. It doesn't, the thing. none of this matches. Not, not, none of this, this whole crate is just like it to me. It, it, like, here's the thing there's no pants in this at all. So, well, no, there's cargo pants in the lower right. Yeah, 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 there's cargo pants, but like for the, the shogun, like, oh, what, you're what talking you, about, yeah, yeah, what are you gonna wear? So, you're there. gonna wear the helmet. The boots and the body armor. And what are you going to wear? And, and then the pants, they don't match. That What, that didn't make the cut? No, those are Shogun. <laughs> That's the thing is that, yeah. They're, those oh my are God, I didn't even look at the name. But they're just like gray <laughs> cargo pants. Yeah, they don't, they don't even fit the style. Oh, that's so stupid. You figured they would put some sort of leg armor, kind of like what a Shogun warrior would have, right? I, leg don't even, armor. I don't even care about armor. Why don't they just make it red like the rest of the whole thing? Yeah. It doesn't. None, none of this. None of this fits. None of this matches. It's it, uh, to me. This just looks like, like they had finished a few, like models, and just put them all in one big crate. Yeah. Now, what about the Neko Chan shorts? Like, those look kind of similar. But I just, man, I just don't. That's that. Ha I don't know why they're putting these in Just Survive. I mean, I've already talked about that enough. Yeah, I mean, so far these are just in King of the Kill, but they will come to just. There's been no indication that skins are going to stop coming to just survive. So yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, I just don't understand. Well, how would they release the the sniper? They and all would. That? So if that's they, if they don't do this whole they have, crate, they're going the to have to exactly. They have no choice. I don't see why they don't do. They should have. They could have done this as two separate crates. That's what I'm have saying. a have a fun for fun crate if you want to have a ridiculous outfit, and then have people running skin running their you know I mean come on doing the raffles for the the sniper body armor the assault mask the you know the tactical helmet all that stuff like have that be in one because I don't want to win these other ones everything with a line even, through it doesn't make it. everything with a line through it doesn't make sense in this crate yeah they're bright colors they, they don't make any sense they could have done that as its own crate. Not, I mean, they couldn't, uh, they, they wouldn't have been able to do those six things at their own crate, but they could have made another kind of, uh, st st this is like a hipster, not even hipster, it's just like a meme style design. The, the, that sunglasses with the, the cat with the sunglasses, that's like a meme style. But yeah. it, it, it's mished in here with a heavy assault backpack, sniper fingerless gloves, tech combat boots, sniper tactical helmet. It just doesn't make any sense. There's no logic behind this. These two things do not fit. Yeah. You you have six skins that don't make any sense in this game. They make absolutely no sense. They they, they don't fit. They don't fit the game, and then they sure as hell don't fit. The, they don't match with anything else in this crate. See, but I think this is just designers. Like, oh, what what funny thing can we put from the internet? You know, and and make it a theme. They're just it, they're just making meme themed skins. And I personally, I just I don't like seeing those. And I've already talked about that. That's pollution to me in Just Survive. The fact that they put all this this junk in here is pollution to me, and it just totally turns me off to wanting to play. Like one thing. Okay, so let's talk about We Happy Few. The thing is, is when you go in there, it has a 1960s feel to it. Everything does. Yeah. Like they keep to the theme, they keep to the, the aesthetic that they're trying to get with this. Um, so many of these games, they keep to that design. I mean, you could talk about miscreated. Like they keep to the theme. Like there are things that you would realistically see: the shirts, the hats, the the weapons. Everything fits, right? Um, even for the most part in Daisy. I mean, I haven't seen anything that's ridiculous. I don't see screenshots of people just looking 
horrendous in day Z. Um, you know, it's, it's just, this is, it seems yeah, like it's see unique people, to this you game. You see people with uh, no clothes on handcuffed in the, in the middle of a street. No, but yeah, it just, I'm fine. And, and I, and I've stated this and I'll state it again. I'm fine with stuff like this Neo Chan in the game. I'm perfectly fine with it in the game. But now if I was, I'm fine with it in, in, in King of the Kill personally. If, if I were to go out, I would, I don't buy skins to start or buy crate keys to start. But if I was going to and I wanted any of these sniper things, I would not buy. I would not buy this uh, a key for this crate because you're no. most likely going to end up with. Yeah, maybe you'll get the the percentage wise. Uh, you're going to get something you don't. Yeah, want. exactly. Like, I don't want the Shogun stuff. It, I don't and it's want not like if it, if it was like desert camo. Uh, urban camo and digital camo all in one crate, right? Those three kind of things. And you, and you it, have to get enough of them to possibly make an outfit of one or the other. But, but the thing is, is I'm going to get an outfit of an outfit that just booty shorts for my male character. I mean, come on. But, but, that, that, that's, exa but that's what I'm saying. If it was three different types of ammo, urban, digital, and and, and whatever, name a third type of am uh, a camo. If you got one, if your body armor was digital and your pants were uh urban and your uh boots were something else they're all camo they all they're not the same kind of camo, but they but all you would fit. still get people but, that are willing to put money in to try exactly to I mean, set. are you like you're gonna wear you're gonna wear uh rainbow colored booty shorts uh and your tech camo boots with your uh neo chan r380 and and your shogun helmet like, n none of that matches. Absolutely none yeah. of it. And it doesn't make any sense together. That's the thing that doesn't that doesn't make sense. Th what this looks like to me is, hey, guys, we need to get another crate out. What skins do we have done? And this is what the result looks like, in my opinion, because I don't see who... They should be taking more... I know it takes them a long time to finish these, but, like, just make us a themed crate. Yeah, like the wrestling crate. That was fine. Everything was wrestling. It was all is it themed. Because you would, if if you're wanting that wrestling stuff, you get that crate. Exactly. And you're not build the set. However, exactly. But that, that's the thing is with this, they're mixing so many different themes that it just makes me. I don't want those things. I don't want them polluting my list of inventory items. Uh, you know, of my skin items. I just I don't want it. And so, we'll have to see. I mean. It just doesn't well, have you sense. noticed in on the male character they wear they have bikini underwear? You ever notice that? No, I've never. <laughs> if you look like they got bikini no. underwear. I mean, I've, I, I, I don't character. know. I've never. Sh I, I I don't ever shred my pants in the game. So, well, you were running around in the in the beginning no. area. Like, I, I I'm tabbed out. I don't pants. I don't even pay attention. I wait till somebody said, "Hey, three seconds," and I'm like, "Oh, tab back in. Let's do this." It's just you know, it's like so, and and all these guys are running around in these little like. Daisy Duke shorts. It's just so weird to me. Like the themes are just so weird. Yeah. So um, this crate, I just think is a, again, uh, could be totally off the mark, but I feel like it's again, it's just a total cob job of, Hey, we need to get a new crate out. So we got, I think they could have gotten a lot of positive things from the sniper laminated body armor from the sniper yes. tap. Like, that's beautiful. Like people would have given it a lot yeah, more. Do you remember? I mean, do you remember all the we showed? We spent probably an hour showing all of the concept art that they did in that live stream. We showed a, so much concept. Don't you think they're aiming at like the the twelve year old, you know, maybe above, from, with like that, that no. cat? No, that's shirt? not. That's the thing. That's like an internet. That's like the inter, that is aiming at like the, the, uh, teenagers, the millennials, and kids in their twenties, because that's yeah. like the it's. But, but I just. I don't know. It just blows my mind that they would put all those things together. It just, it's. Well, they could have, they could have made so much better of a theme, like go with the Shogun warrior, like, you know, make a full samurai, make it look more samurai ish. Yeah. Like make that the theme of it and then have one that's your, your combat based outfits and then have one that's just ridiculous cats wearing sunglasses in space. Yeah. Why don't you make a meme theme. crate with it? It's all meme. That would be, that yeah. would be cool because it's all one style. It's not, doesn't appeal to me. But it's all one style. But I'm sure as hell not going to go out and waste money on keys to get my uh, Neo Chan R380 skin. It's just not. It just doesn't. I'm not. I'm just not going to do it. I wouldn't do it anyway. But I would be. I'm a hundred times less likely to do it now because six or seven of the items in this crate, I would want to get rid of it. Would not want in my inventory because it would just add extra stuff to the list that I have no interest in wearing. So that's yeah. kind of how I see this. Um, so we so don't know when it's going to be in the game. We don't know anything about it. All we know is that it's the Ronin crate. Um, if you want some more details, it's on the Survivor Rest, uh, Survivor Rest 
uh, dot com website and uh, you can see all the items and there's some higher resolution uh, thumbnails of them and so on and so forth. Yeah. So there's been a big controversy um, over on Reddit and there was a post where they have um, they're removing the ability to sell old, a certain older H1Z1 crate items. They did on that yesterday. Marketplace. So yesterday yes. they put this in effect. Um, so let, I'll just read that statement first. So it says on yep, July right. 25th, 2016, we will be removing the ability to sell certain older H1Z1 crate items on the Steam Marketplace. Crate items have been marked trade only since Mercenary crates uh, since the Mercenary crates were released last year. This change brings the or, brings the older pre everything pre Mercenary crate items in line with the rest of the crate uh, items in the game. Please note that the crates themselves can be traded and sold on the uh, and sold on the marketplace. So you can sell the items. Uh, or you can sell the crates and all that stuff. You just can't sell the items that you're Actual getting items from, in the crates. from anything uh, pre-mercenary. So, um, Hanny, who runs Survivor Rests and runs um, a trading post website, the way these trading posts work is you say, I want to give up these six items. It gets trans... He has a Steam account, essentially. Well, it's not essentially. He does. He has a Steam account that holds all... Holds everybody's skins, and then the website has a database or whatever that says, okay, these skins go to, you know, this skin goes to Brian, this skin goes to Brian, this and, skin and goes it to sends them. and it sends them, exactly. Um, so that's how that works. The issue is um, that since they did this thing, he has uh, almost 70,000 items now stuck in his Steam inventory that he can't do that anything he can't. with. Yeah, he yep. can't do anything with them. That's a real issue. So, and and that's going to come back on him. Like, people are going to view him poorly for this, right? Because they're, they're going to think that, and it has nothing to do with him. Daybreak made this change. The skins are gone. You Purely can't get Daybreak. your skin back. Exactly. You can't get your skins back now. He can't, he can't send them back, and they, they didn't give notice. That's the thing is, he had said, if you would have given notice at least, then, then he could have you know, giving people all their skins back, right, before it took effect. Yeah. But the thing is, is now, as you said, he is stuck with all of these, and, and people think that now he has skins that are theirs, right, because, you know, th these were all things that were supposed to be traded back back and forth. Yeah, it, it's it just another one of those decisions that they just kind of like, oh, we should do this, and they just do it. Like, where's the, the, the forethinking? Yeah, no thought of all this. There's no, there, there is none, and th and that's and that's really what it comes down to. There's, they have done this now. Um, all of these crates are lost essentially, or all this, all these skins are essentially gone because it, they're gone. The, these skins are completely gone. There's nothing that can be done with them now. They're stuck on his, and what he says is they're stuck on his bot account that doesn't even own the game. He doesn't even have a copy of the game on this account. No. It's just this lost account that. It now has 70,000 items stuck on it that can't be traded. Yeah. So it, it, it's like, what are you going to do? It's, uh, well, and that, it doesn't make any sense. Is, it, 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 I assume it's hard for them to, to change this back now. Um, I, I don't know. Like, I, and I could tell from his post, he was incredibly mad about it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he should be. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what, I, I don't know what else other than them just saying, whoops, you know, let's undo this, what they can expect to do. Um, I don't know. Like, it's just, it's a mess. It's it's a mess. And and that's, that's the thing is if, if they're going to do this, at least say in a week, we're going to be doing this. I don't know if they're trying to stop people from trading right before, but what's the point? Like, why? Why are you trying to stop people from trading these around how they should? I don't understand how the whole point of having these stupid skins of the game anyway. If you can't, tr if you can't, um, well, you can. Um, they want you to be buying these things. Well, and it's having not that no you can't trade them. them. You can, you can't sell them. Yeah. Well, no, that's but that that's the so thing. they're trade I, only. Well, they've been marked trade only. Some of the shirts have been not marked turned to non tradable. Some of the shirts you're saying have because like this like this guy was posting in in Reddit. Saying I have, um, I have 500 plus of this one type of shirt that's been changed to non-tradable. Oh, nice! So he can't do anything with them. Yeah, and um, a lot. Some so, um, 
a lot of the the de- so uh, Legion CM and Radar X were both tagged in on this post, and uh, Radar came in with uh, this post and said, um, "We'll talk to some of the folks and let you know if we can provide some more details." Seventy thousand items is far, far away. Um, you know, is way farther than the average player has. The average player doesn't have seventy thousand items, which is a valid point. Um, yeah. and, and, and you know, he says something that if if it was if I was in handy shoes, I'd be pissed. I'd be beyond pissed. Um, but what but what he says, I mean, is valid. He goes, let's try to keep this thing in perspective, and that is true. While this is, I can say it is very shitty, Brian. You can totally agree. Yeah. But we do have to keep this in perspective that there is maybe a handful of people that have 70,000 skins, you know, a handful no. of people that are running these trading websites. It's not like everybody is but running But they need to be working website. unless they don't want people trading. Like, that's the thing is if they don't want this being a thing. Um, but I think there's a lot of people that just wouldn't do skins if that weren't a thing. Like, yeah. they're making money from it still. They need to work with these places that are promoting their product. I mean, that's one thing we've seen from Daybreak and we can complain about Daybreak does not like to work with people unless they're a huge streamer or, you know, if they don't view them as a huge streamer yeah. and, you know, it, and I don't see them really working well with Hanny. Like Hanny's been pissed at him for a while from just from gathering how he's been reacting. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, so who, who knows here? And, and then um, a lot of people just pretty much telling the devs that, you know, they're doing an awful job. Um, and of course, them coming back. Oh, we appreciate your feedback, so on and so forth. <laughs> yeah. But God, it's like they can't win. They, it's like yeah. they, they, like what? So I would like to hear what the real reason is. Like, what is their? Pl- what would have been nice is, hey guys, we plan on doing this. To do this and to execute this properly, we need to do this and turn the trading or the selling off for certain do whatever they need to do but because they yeah. give no information it just kind of looks like they're giving the middle finger to everybody if they would have said hey we want to implement this cool thing we want to implement cool thing a but to implement yeah. cool thing a we need to get rid of thing b so you then you decide oh you know what that is thing a is really really cool i, I really like that okay that's fine we can give up thing B because thing A is going to be really awesome. But when they just take thing B away and don't mention what the, what the reason is yeah, behind don't give it, the, the reason or, and, and, or what but it's I'm afraid help. that the reason is going to be, Oh, well we see that we're going to make more money no. by not doing this, you know, or we're going to encourage people to get new skins, which is still making more money by getting rid of, rid of the trading of the old skins, or they want people dealing in crates so that they don't know what skin they're going to get. Which encourages more crate purchases and, and people so holding on to crates, now, not opening the crates. If I can uh, inject my two cents here, um, I have a feeling this has something to do with the recent CSGO and the CSGO Lotto and C- all these CSGO yeah. gambling sites um, that are now, they're all, they're all uh, or most of them are getting class action lawsuits filed against them. I've been following it very, very closely. Um, there's a lot of people that are going to be in some some deep, now, deep okay so personal stuff. opinion though uh, because you're you've done more uh, of the csgo and everything than i have, I have not actually i played oh, it once see? i played it once on the game oh, of the okay. week so and I've, played... I've been but i've been following the whole csgo thing i've never played csgo besides the game of the week that we played okay so i look at csgo and if you look like steam and, and valve have own the game pushing the whole concept of selling skins and having it be kind of like a gambling setup like that's what they do so they don't and that's kind of what daybreak is doing with the whole crate system yeah. it's a gambling system. so this is what this is what this is where the issue comes in valve has known that this stuff is going on they allow these third-party csgo gambling sites to because you have to authenticate through your twitch uh you have to use the, the or not your Twitch. you have to use this your steam api account obviously so it can access your items um yeah. so valve knew this was happening and didn't do anything to stop it. So now people say, hey, you know, maybe we're going to sue Valve now because they knew this was happening. They didn't do anything. This could be Daybreak trying to do that. But nobody's gambling H1Z1 skins because they suck. They're all garbage. Nobody wants them. Yeah. I mean, there's they're, not, they, they, there's they not an issue with that. They create that set of set, yeah. the rarity. Yeah, they, and plus, this is just hurting it because people are going to be nervous to really invest in skins now. Like the guy who he, he got a ton of a certain shirt. Cause he viewed it as kind of an investment that 
once they weren't a, were around as much anymore, he was going to sell them all. I'm sorry, right? but if somebody honestly thought that they were making an investment into a skin on H1Z1, why don't you go throw some money in the S&P 500? Because <laughs> I can assure you that that was not a smart investment well, opportunity. Well, you know, he, he, was, he was investing in 500 of a certain shirt because he figured... <laughs> Hopefully he doesn't this, listen to this show because... <laughs> well, and that's the thing is like now... He he's getting nothing for those 500 shirts. Why do you want 500 shirts in your inventory? I want 500 red trucker it, hats. That's what I'm all. That's what I'm about. All the all the red trucker hats for days. Um, okay, so here here's another here's here's a rant of mine. Just a stupid little thing that makes no sense to me. Daybreak, if you are listening, please one thing. Let me. They've already favorites. they've already turned it off. They're not listening. Yeah, I know they turned it off. Uh, let me put favorites on my skin list. If there's something that I skin all the time, let me put a little star on it yeah. that makes it show up on the top of my list so that I can quickly skin my things without having to scroll down a huge list to find that one shirt that I put on every single time when I do a BR. Well, makes no sense. And, It'd be so simple to do UI wise. And this is and another thing that Hanny says, and um, he says, um, I don't remember if it was in his first post or his second post. He says a lot of people use second Steam accounts to do inventory management, which I didn't realize, Brian. You could essentially trade all of the skins you don't use to your second account so that you only have like six skins, and it's the six skins you use. But now all of those skins, you know, the hundred or so other skins you may have are locked to this other account that, again, yep. may not even own H1Z1. Yeah, I might not have a copy of the game. Not, I mean, we, we, we do have an account with a copy of the game, I believe. Um, we have an extra account with a copy of the game. Yeah, but... we, we have our old builder account. <laughs> yeah, we do have an old it's... H1Z1 account. So um, we have an account that's all by itself doing nothing that I, I'd have to even log in to check to see what's going on. I don't on even know. What the, I'd have to go and find the login. Um, yeah. But but I guess that was a, I guess that's a thing that people were doing um, because he wanted to, uh, people were doing that because there was no, he said a lack of, um, I don't remember where he Tools wrote Tools or whatever. But he said a lack um, he said the, the you know the the lack of inventory management. People use a second account to trade items to you know to essentially yeah. to do. Uh, you have to do management by creating a second Steam account and transferring items over to it so that you can essentially make a favorite system. Um, I just I think it makes me nervous. Like I, you don't really want. I I never understood people who would pay like a hundred dollars for a, a skin. Yeah, that just that's not me. But this really makes you kind of get nervous about really doing anything because. They take so little thought into just making one thing go one way or the other. And they don't notify anybody. So I'm sure there's a lot of people that this has negatively impacted. And it's just Daybreak's. And if you look, like the comments that Daybreak put on this, like everybody downvoted. Um, you know, like yeah. they don't even show their comments because everybody's downvoted anything they say in this whole thread. Um, yeah, it's just. It's frustrating to me, and I just I, I wish that they would learn from their past mistakes. And there's just so, seems like many times in things like this where they just make a change because someone on their team said, "Oh, we should do something this way." Yeah, and they just do it. Like, can maybe put the feelers out. Like, say, "Hey, we're planning on doing this on Reddit." You'll get feedback, whether it's right feedback yeah, or not. Yeah. Instead, what they but did. But imagine if they would have said this a week beforehand and well, said, "Hey, here's what we're looking well, at instead, doing." Instead, what they did is they put a. Steam community notification out on July 22nd saying on July 25th we're doing this. So they gave people less than three days to... Yeah, and I didn't even see it till the 25th. Yeah, I mean, it was a Steam Just Survive news announcement, which, you know, of course, what a great way... That? What a great way to... I mean, well, how about an email? I mean, they've got our freaking emails because we have Daybreak accounts. How about an email? Hey... Well, it would have been noticed if they would put a Reddit notification out. Um, yeah, actually, I don't even think well, there may have been. Any. I never saw a Reddit notification. No, I didn't see an actual post on Reddit about it. I saw no, people, it was just people reacting yeah. to things happening on it, but they never posted on Reddit that this was going to happen. Like they would have got the community at least saying something. But yeah, it. yeah, too bad it would have been you know three days too late. But um, so there you go. That's um, that's the H one Z one drama of the week. Um, so uh, we'll and now okay, so here's that. one more thing. Um, and this was actually. I think uh, Gravity Beard had mentioned this, that you know they, they think th put a thing in there saying save Ranchito, and um, one of the developers replied back saved. So I don't know if they have decided to not change the name. I really hope so because it doesn't make Ranchito sense. Ranchito I really it didn't make sense for them to change the name of the of the the city after everybody already knows. All right, it. so yeah, it says 
as mentioned in the H1Z1 live stream earlier today, so this was five days ago, so this passed, and I didn't catch it because I actually watched that. Um, the town of Ranchito will survive the Z2 transition. Okay. So, so they are going to keep it as Ranchito with the correct spelling. Um, yeah, so that's one, one thing positive out of all this, of them just making a change, and then um, who knows, maybe something with the skins will change too because yeah. they, they react to the negative publicity rather than asking beforehand and then if you're interested i figured i'd put this up here if you're interested in a job at daybreak if you want to be brutalized constantly by people like us well they, they are um, doing that college lots program. Of jobs. i think they're and i believe they're still doing that college program as well girls um, yeah what was it called? yeah well yeah it was called, yeah it was the called initials girls. were girl yeah it was, girls or something yeah, like that it was, but it's, yeah. it's for anybody not just girls yeah well, like like likely story um so there, there there's that as well um PR. But yeah, they have a they have a number of like pr uh, programmers, um, artists. Falcon's actually asking if there's a PR job open. I don't think so. I didn't see. Yeah, one. marketing and PR. They oh, have a there? brand manager. But is that for H one Z? But it's not for, for marketing. Is it for H one Z one though? I thought it was for um, DC Universe. I thought I saw it for. I could. Be I didn't. Wrong. I don't. I don't see on here where it says just marketing. It's just the marketing department. It's so I don't gotcha. see it. So, with, so it's not listed. It's not to a specific game. Yeah, and so they, no, yeah, they have uh, no senior product H one Z one game, H one Z one. Yeah, marketing. and then they have um, brand manager marketing, marketing and PR is the nice. So yeah, so if you're interested in getting in there, they have programmer jobs, um, IT jobs, and you can live in beautiful. They have one unannounced title, which they're you can live in. You can and sure. that's either beautiful San Diego or Austin Tejas. Austin Texas. Yeah, yeah. Austin Tejas. The there you go. So. That's uh that's H one Z one for the week. Um, we'll keep following that, and um, maybe I'll try to get up with uh, Hanny this week and get his kind of get his feedback on yeah, it. Yeah, get his opinion on it, maybe. So I'm I'm gonna write myself a note and and try to do that this week because I think okay. that would be interesting. And he's in our um, Discord. Yeah, because he's because so you know he runs a website that does all of this purely sellings. dedicated to this. Well, and it's not just H one Z one; it's a lot of other things too. Um, yeah. So he is. Uh, and now all of his customers are just kind of like, hey, now all of his customers' items are stuck in his serve and on his platform. Skins that people view as having value of hundreds of dollars. Yes, are you know? stuck now. Could potentially be stuck on his yep. account and not tradable. So now, yep. now what does he do? He's got to tell all of his people, sorry, you lost out on your sorry, yeah, you dollar skin. skin. Yeah, exactly. Your skins are wrong. That's that's a real issue. So we'll. Yep. Uh, I'll try to do that this week, and uh, and uh, we'll, we'll bring it to you next week, maybe. So, so our arc news is going to be really quick. Let's <laughs> um, let's hit it, Brian, real quick. So, two forty four dot seven four, um, which was released on the nineteenth. Let's hear it. And its official notes are: no official patch notes were published for this version. So that That's is a first. the update. Hold on, but hold on, hold on. That's significant. That is a first. They literally will do. They will include one line in a patch yeah. note. They included nothing. That's not good. Yeah, they they put, they just they didn't even put what it it's was. It's in italics. They did some sort of yeah. a patch. Yeah. Um, now they are on the twenty eighth, which is in two days from now. Um, they are doing a huge thing, so I assume they're just kind of waiting because they have some such a big release coming. That's where they're releasing the center uh, mega update, primitive plus, and all that we've talked about this the last couple of weeks. But they are releasing a very big update in the next two days. Yeah. Um, so we'll just have to see, and I'm gonna have to kind of run it by our, our group because I know people have been playing, they're still playing on our ARC server um, currently if they're okay with maybe doing the center or, you know, the center with Primitive Plus. Um, that would, you know, that'd be kind of fun. If we, if we even just save and pause the current one and start up a new one and have people play that for a couple weeks. Yeah, that might be a good idea. So, but I'll, I'll mention to people not to pull a daybreak and I'll Run it by them Shut first. it off and wipe it. No Just shut to. it off and say, hey, it's done. Sorry, all the work you put in the last couple of months. So, <laughs> All right. So um, now, do we want to start a game giveaway or do we want to go ahead and go through this next game first? Uh, let's do it. Let's start the game giveaway on our brand new system that we're going to try out this week. So we're using... Yeah, so we have we have a new system. We're using MooBot um, just to have it, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But in this way, I don't have to enter, so I can't possibly win. But if you put exclamation point raffle, um, 
I'm not, I'm not going to type it in because then it'll put me in the raffle and then people will say it's rigged. Um, but if you exclamation point raffle in there, it will enter you for a game. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I think what I was going to do is Mafia 2. I kind of ran this by you last week. Is that a yeah, cool game to do for this one? Let's do it. All right. So we will do... Um, let me make sure this is the right one. No, I think we did... Last, no, so this is actually the bur- bur- the bur- Bureau. Um, yeah, right. We did, we did now that you say it, we did do Mafia. We did last Mafia week. 2 yeah. last week. I just want to make sure I did the right one. This so this true. week is going to be the Bureau XCOM Declassified. Um, it's available on Steam. It, it looks like a really fun game. I have it, but I've not really played it. Um, but it's it's right now about $20 on Steam. Um, and I'll have a link here if you want to want to check it out. The graphics look really good on it. But yeah, exclamation point raffle, and then we'll we'll test this out. Hopefully everything doesn't just go wrong. <laughs> yes, that, that that would be helpful. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So we'll just we'll give this a few minutes. Um, and I I don't know. I, I hopefully it's working. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there you go. We'll uh. We'll keep you up to it's, date. Yeah, it seems to be pulling names in. So I can't really check on cool. the progress of it. So we'll just try it in a couple minutes and see if it rolls. If it doesn't, then we'll redo it. Yeah, we'll figure it out. So that's uh, that's another uh, reason that you should be here uh, live instead of watching. Yeah, if you're listening. Because exactly. I know a lot of people watch the YouTube videos after the fact. They also um, listen in their cars or whatever. I understand that. But if you have a chance to listen live, if you're around on Tuesday nights, uh, join our Steam group if you're not getting notifications. If you happen to be at your computer and you're a member of our Steam group, you will get a notification that pops up before the show saying, hey, come come, come watch the show live, and you'll have a chance to win these things. Yeah, exactly. Very good. So, yeah, um, so, I mean, that's pretty much ARC. Now, one game that I've really enjoyed that put a patch out recently, we really need to put into one of our upcoming game nights, and I'm sure it is, is The Forest. Um, Nick and I have played this a bit. Yes. Uh, there's just there's some issues with The Forest in terms of how many people can play, Yes, there it's is a smaller the, group of people. And it's a hosted on the person server, so if like the person hosting it is the first to leave, or if they alt-tab out of the game, the whole server yeah. stops responding. It's I don't think it's going to make a good game for a game night, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, we just need to get it to where we just kind of have some people yeah. play it so that we can go through, because there is a lot to it. Like when you and I played it, we, we got pretty far, and it was a lot of fun. Um, and you, you'll find areas that you haven't seen before. Like when you and I played... I had not even gone through the cave system and we found a huge amount of cave system. Yeah. Actually, um, I, my dead body, I still got to go grab your back. Your body is yeah. still sitting in that cave. Yeah. So, all right. So, um, yeah, and it, it, it's, I do see in our thing, it says added one more user to the raffle. Okay, so cool. it's, it's putting notifications out that it's adding people to the raffle. So nice. that's good. Okay, cool. All, all right. So, um, now they added, um, camping garbage and, you know, audio fixes and just all kinds of things in this patch this is 0.43 um, change log and this came out on the 20th so six days ago um, but it looks like a lot of fixes and and just game improvements um, I have uh, you know one thing they did is they revamped the procedural uh, wall autofill um, so like for roofs and things like that so that they're making the craft so that's one thing that I'm always big about like the building system. Um, they are tweaking that. I hate it when a, when a game puts out like a building system and then they never touch it again because they just put yeah. the check box, you know, the check box next to has a building system. Um, they, this one has a pretty fun building system. You know, it looks it looks really cool, and that's where I'd like to get a group of people together so we can make a really cool building. Yeah, because uh, it works so well. So they are working on that. Um, you know, they're working on some of the multiplayer things. They had a lot of uh, multiplayer fixes, like reducing jerkiness and squirrel animations, and uh, fixed you know players slowly rotating to the side and 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 just, upside down when using chat box while swimming. Little weird things yeah, like exa- that. Yeah, exactly. Just little odds and end things that people yeah, have I mean, to be is, enough people have to be playing your game to actually like. Oh, hey, this is an issue that people are having. So this is probably a list of things that have just been on their issue tracker, <laughs> like. They they put out a patch when they got enough of them done. And this is a pretty yeah. big list of just a lot of little things. So, um, but yeah, that was zero point four three, and we'll have a full list of that, a link to it, on the website. Um, one thing they did is they have a couple new items. They have a new craftable item, that's a stick bag, so it increases your carry capacity by ten, um, and then a rock bag, which carry increases, and that's a stick. So it'll increase your stick carrying inventory, and they have one that'll increase your rock carrying inventory. Yeah. So you can make specific bags. So like you have holders that you can put 
um, wooden and, and stones and all like they it's very much a, a gathering of specific materials and because you're trying to build one certain thing like this. Has, so they have things to help with that because you can only carry so much. So, all right. So that, yeah, that was 0.43. Um, and then they put out a couple of quick hot fixes right after that. Things mm -hmm. I think that they noticed um, broke because of this. It's broke. Uh, yeah. So they fixed the amount bonus from uh, the fixed max amount bonus from having stick or rock bag and inventory stacking each time a save game is loaded. Um, so that was just something that when you were saving the games, it, it kind of broke it from having those items. And then um, that was 0.43B and then 0.43C. Uh, they put a fix for toggling between autofill and manual placement of walls, floors, and roofs it is now done with a simple press of the craft button instead of having to hold it. So, um, yeah, so this was just something when you were building, and it says fix, fixes issue with other triggers breaking the toggling, such as drink trigger when building over a lake. So, because you, you would go to build and like it would bring up the, do you want to drink water trigger instead? Triggered. So. Yeah, you're, it makes it would make people triggered more than they want it to be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. So again, we we had I, I can't I'm not gonna speak for you. I had fun playing it. Um, it's just that it's so lit. Like I feel like it's a multiplayer game that you can only play single player with because if you play multi, like you don't want to be waiting on somebody else to play like i don't want to yeah. wait on brian it has to be one where you say all right we're gonna play this today but but, <laughs> you know, that, we... but at that but that's the issue it's like and at that point you might as well just play alone because and if it's... i'm not on there like because it's being hosted on my computer like if i'm not on there um you can't play that's what like, i'm saying it's thing. a multi it's, like, it's a game that it up. it's a game that has multiplayer where it discourages multiplayer and promotes only doing single player i'm you know I'm. I want to play a game when I want to play a game. I don't want to have to revolve around Brian's schedule to go on and play. That's very, very. That's inconvenient for him, and it's inconvenient for me. And God forbid you add three more people to the loop, then it's yeah. you know, or two more. It it supports eight players, I believe, on the multiplayer, yeah, uh, including so. the host. So it's eight. Uh, you know, seven and and one is person being the host. That's not. You are never going. You are never going to get eight people together at the exact same time. You know, always to play. So, yeah, and that's the thing also it's a, it's being a real issue, be, getting everybody the same group. It's kind of like we run into the same thing with board games. Like, yeah, we have these board games we want to play and, and one and guy owns really, it. Yeah. And so it's, it's like uh, we will play a game halfway through and it's like, all right, well, we got to we got to schedule some time to finish this game. Um, we, that like never happens. Yeah, because the guy <laughs> that owns you it, has get to, everybody, exactly. you don't get all six people on back. the right schedule to have that exact group again. Exactly. That, that, that's the issue. It, I really, I can't imagine that the development team, I mean, like ARC, you can host it, like on your computer, you can host an ARC server that plays from your client, but you can also host a dedicated server. They need to add a dedicated server to this game. I don't know if it's going to, I don't know if it's possible, um, but there needs to be one because this game is never going to take off. This game will never take off if there's no multiplayer. Yeah. Which essentially there is. They have, they've essentially created uh, a, an environment where multiplayer is discouraged. Yep. So that's that's what's going. So on. So we'll see. I mean, it's it's it is a fun game, and I think if we could just even just as a one time, like, hey, we're just going to play this for a couple hours. Yeah. And let's just see what we can do, and that and just don't expect anything beyond that. Exactly. Because Brian and I played it once for probably two hours, and I was sick, and I was like, I'm going to bed, and we haven't we haven't we haven't even. Neither of us have even have launched it since. Have then. launched it, or even trying to like get up with each other to to play. Like Brian's never yeah. sent me a message like, "Hey, Nikki, down to play." I'm like, and, and I haven't sent him one either because it's just yeah. I don't if care. we're gonna be doing like, we'd be starting a new one just to see yeah, where we exactly. can go. Exactly. So um, there is. Let's see. You just did the first one, right? There's still no. I did oh no, the no. You, one okay, as well. you did the so the one. B and C. Yeah, yeah. They, they there was no A. Like it was four, four okay. three B. That that, four, that threw me off a little C. bit. Um, yeah. So yeah, there you go. That's the forest. Um, how much? I gotta check it out though. How much is it? Uh, let me see. We got the, it for free. The sale. <laughs> it's a, it's fifteen dollars. So that is that that is. Well, we paid for it, but but we that's didn't. kind of been the price. Yeah, we I mean, we got it in a humble bundle, which so, was kind of like the extra game in a humble bundle, yeah. which was a nice surprise. So this is what I'm thinking: for fifteen dollars, you're essentially getting a you're essentially getting a single player game. 
which is not bad. Yeah. Um, and it's a fun game. Like, there's yeah, a lot is. to it. I mean, you look at a game like Firewatch, that was $20. So you're essentially getting a single-player game at this point. Maybe in the future they add a... Uh, add a multiplayer dedicated if they added a thing. permanent server to it that yeah. would make a huge difference for this game it would the yeah. problem is 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 you have to host it and it's just a it's not easy to just i could just throw if i could just throw a server up and but have it even up there, if you could just host like on your computer you can host a dedicated like in arc you could host an arc server on your computer without where, it having to be launched exactly it's a, it's a cmd window it runs the server i mean it's a process yeah. But they don't even have that. Brian left to go get a drink, and he alt tabbed out of the I game. I alt tabbed out, and the game froze. Froze. It froze my end <laughs> of the. It t- completely froze the server. That yeah. is not. That is not multiplayer. I'm sorry. You can't say that. Yeah, that's if got I a multiplayer. Alt tab out, and, and and like he was like, "What happened? The game stopped." And I'm like, "Oh, I alt tabbed out to like Check go to another Skype. Win- browser window." <laughs> exactly. Or yeah. And the whole thing stopped. Yeah, that's not that. That's that's not good. That doesn't work. So, uh, we'll see. I just you know that's. Come on. Really? Like, that's your definition of multiplayer? You know, give me a break. That, that that just really irks me for whatever reason. Yeah. So um, I guess we could try and do our uh, raffle. Do you know how to how do you pick a winner? Yeah. So I'm logged into the, the web page. Okay. So, so I guess. All right. Go so ahead. I'm going to do a draw. All right. Gravity Beard. So now and then I have a button here. I can say announce the winner in chat. Oh, okay. So that has announced it. So it's as rigged as button. so it's as rigged as it was before. It's just glad. Yes. Glad. <laughs> I can't. Moobot is picking we, people who regularly <laughs> listen to our show. Just as corrupt as it was before. We just we system, it's still corrupt. And is it is it gravity who actually takes off work and. Yeah, who gets really got gets mad. really pissed at me on Twitter when I have limited Internet and can't do the show at the time we, we normally do it at. So. Yeah, he work, he sets his work to schedule over in Germany around the time that our show is going to be. So I guess that's dedication. <laughs> so he deserves he deserves a game every once in a while. Yes. <laughs> what game? Did, what game was it? Uh, that wasn't Mafia. It was a. Uh, no, this was the Bureau, the Bureau XCOM Declassified. Cool. And I'll be sending you a humble bundle gift link. Yes. So, so enjoy the game. Now another thing, kind of survival game wise, this is a game that Brian and I have purchased, but he's played it. A little more than I have, but neither of us have played it a lot. I know um, Felicia has got like 120 something hours on this game. Uh, oh this my. is Fallout 4, and they re- they're yes. constantly releasing this new DLC. Um, and this time we now have the Fallout 4 Vault Tech Workshop, which yes. essentially takes that Vault Tech game, the 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 Pip Boy or not the Pip Boy, uh, the Vault game that where they released for uh, iOS and Android like yeah. last year. And brings it essentially into the game. It allows you to create a vault and use it as a settlement. Uh, it's you can take a vault and classify it as a settlement. Um, and if you look at some of the, the the pictures, it looks just it's a it's a higher quality 3D version of the Vault Tech mobile or the the Vault mobile game. Um, you've got a bunch of different rooms. Everything is segmented off. Um, this, I guess, is supposed to add a lot of stuff to the game, but the interesting thing to look at is there's 532 reviews, and only 40% of them are positive. Um, yeah. So the, 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 I'm just going to pick this top review that popped up. Um, so this guy says the positives are it allows you to build vaults, uh, new workshop items, um, experiment on settlers. Uh, you can do experiments on settlers. Uh, you can use uh, the new items from the wor- from the, the vault in other settlements, which is cool. Um, but then his negatives are most of the workshop items are already in a mod. So he's saying some of the, the stuff, they're essentially incorporating stuff from mod, which I guess is kind of a, that's a picky thing. Kind of, to, it's kind of like what Ark does. You know, like yeah. Ark gets the best mods and then they implement But that's, them. Kind of, you can't really complain that, oh, this stuff's already available, but a mod. But the thing is, is they're charging for this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but like, I, I don't, again, I don't have a problem. You, you I have went a out and passed, so I don't notice. But it. you went out and you went out and installed a mod to get those added benefits. I, you can't. I, I, I don't. I'm not even going to mention that. Um, the caves you are given to build is a joke, according to this person. Um, very short, forgettable quests. Um, in the end, it's just another settlement. It's another workshop DLC. So uh, he is not impressed, and I guess the general consensus, at least, it's been out a day is yeah. that 40% of the people are uh, not impressed. Actually, 60% of the people are not impressed. 40% think it's positive. So, uh, see, and I only know I only see two other people that have this. Okay, so I, yeah, I don't know anybody that has it. Um so I mean, my my cousin has it and then Remedy has yeah, it. Yeah, and then so. you know, this next guy releases one that's interesting. And he says 
Uh, maybe they could release a workshop that would let me build a DLC worth a damn. So I guess they're not happy with the... I wonder if... I don't have this. Uh, I don't have Someone else put this game is having a serious identity crisis. They're kind of getting away with what people love about Fallout. You know, I feel like... like Because they include so much stuff in the main game. <laughs> yeah, and that's the thing is is people love the, the add-ons just to make the game whatever they want it to be. But the problem is, I think, I think that they're trying to be like, oh, well, we could sell some of that stuff, or we could, you know, that can be. A, you don't need to make it a main part of the game. Like if, it, unless it's doing something that is really difficult to do in the form of an add-on or you know a mod. Yeah. Um, and that's kind of I think what Arc has done. Um, you know, and they are doing things that just wouldn't be achievable. Like if you were doing this in the pre previous Fallout's, it would be, um, just one of the the things that are in the world like yeah you would be putting a gate on it exactly you know what i'm saying like and claiming it's yours so yeah this this you supposedly do have so there is some advanced but, functionality so, but this is where i have the issue people know what they're getting and here's the thing if you bought the season pass that was what 30 dollars. you really can't complain about like oh it doesn't add enough like come on you're getting like eight you're getting eight dlcs for 30 dollars. well something. maybe we're just spoiled like that's the thing is like this is a huge amount of game and like they've made some cool functionality. You know, this is this is a big game. You know, are they are we expecting too much? Yes. I mean, they released a six dollar title. You got a thirty dollar DLC. They're releasing a bunch of stuff. Some is going to stick. Some is going to. Some is not. But I mean, I would know. This is by the way five dollars for this add on. It's not like it's a forty fifty dollar add on. Five dollars for this add on. Um, I wouldn't if I wasn't interested in the vault system i wouldn't yeah. buy it i mean that's kind of simple i mean that's just kind of how i'm seeing this is how i that's how i see it like, i wouldn't be interested in playing the mobile the you know the iphone game in fallout 4 which it's not i know that's not the whole thing but that that seems like it's a big chunk of it yeah. um so who knows well and i and i that's the thing what i liked the most about the previous fallouts was the wandering around and, and kind of finding things right yeah and i i feel like all these add-ons have been less about that and more about hey let's make your your dwelling really cool or let's build something in your dwelling everything's been trying to focus around that one area that previously that's not what fallout was for for me that's not what it that's no. not what i enjoyed about it but they're trying to create some whole other thing rather than saying you know, let's make stuff that lets you discover more of the world or makes the world seem bigger. Like, that's what I would want to see because I want to be able to run around and not feel like there's those limits. Yeah. And this is all about, like, I played and, and I just haven't enjoyed trying to make all these things at my base. But like, to be that fair, is, you don't have, you only have, like, what? 20 hours playtime? 15? Or do you have uh, more than that? I've got 41.1 oh, hours. Wow. I th okay, I thought you were at like 10 or 15 still. No, okay, no. So like you, I've, okay, I've you've got a significant it. amount of time. Then never, my point doesn't matter then. Never mind. Yeah, so I mean, I've, that's the thing is I've really been trying to make myself get into it, but they're not pulling me out of the, the into the world enough. Like, hmm. I want it to feel like I'm discovering something new. And the, the thing is, is I kind of got stuck in a quest that like had me underground for so long <laughs> that I just feel like I've been in like this tunnel of, here's what you have to do, you know, get to the end. Yeah. And I haven't had that exploring feel that I, that I felt in the other one. So maybe I'm just not, maybe I need to go a little bit farther because I got out of that, you know, working with the detective and going through that whole storyline. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't feel like I'm wandering around enough, which is what fallout is to me. Exactly. Um, so that's Fallout. Uh, you can get it for five dollars, or you can buy the season pass for Fallout for fifty dollars, and you'll get all the DLC that was already out. This one, and then everything that's coming after it. So, got a few options available there. The Solus Project, Brian. So this is one that I purchased a couple of weeks ago. Yes, um, you've been. I think you've been I think you talked about it almost every week since the. Yeah, thing. a couple weeks been in doing a row. Stuff. Yeah. So what's going so on? So this here? is one point oh two. This was when they came out on the twentieth. So it was right after last week's show. Uh -huh. um, and so they're incorporating a lot of VR into this. That's that seems to be the new thing. Um, the major game engines are really putting in tools for VR, and so companies that are that are using recent versions of, of engines, um, you know, and are, are fairly up to date and actually 
continuing to put out updates or really finding it easy to incorporate um, the VR aspect. So th this one, um, they, they did do some general fixes. You know, it, it it's a game that I think is, is fairly new. Um, but it, if you look at the second link, they actually have a screenshot. And I put that in there as a VR example. You kind of see how it works. Like they show okay. you working through your inventory system with VR, um, going through with your data pad, um, you know, it, it, it's or your PDA. Oh, that's kind of, it's kind of, uh, yeah. that's, that's weird, man. So yeah, like you, so you put your hand up and it's like, it brings up your, your, your PDA and then you, you point at it and you're actually able to go through the menu system yeah. with, with the VR, um, controllers. So, yeah. So, I mean, we'll just have to see this game. I, I need to get in there and play it some more because I barely started on like I'm, I'm trying to break out into the main world and it, it, it's not one that just lets you instantly be out in the open. Um, you kind of have to work your way through a story to get there. So, but this, this update was mostly VR, like almost everything on it was changing things for VR and then um, some language fixes. So if, it, you know, if you've been playing it, you don't have VR, you're probably not going to notice a huge amount of change with this patch. So, but yeah, this is a solace project. Uh, it is available uh, on the Steam of Marketplace for let's see, uh, nineteen dollars and ninety nine cents. This was recommended to me, I think, by Gravity Beard. Man, he's got correct. some good recommendations and some bad ones. I guess it. Uh... <laughs> yeah, um, the recent ratings on this one's mostly positive. Overall, is very positive. It's good. So, definitely uh, check it out. I got it with the a com the bundle during one of the sales they had. So. Cool. But yeah, that is Solace Project. Now, Hurt World put out an update. And this one, it's kind of hard to see what, because they put in not only what they update, but they put in things that they're looking at doing. Yeah. Uh, kind of like what we ran into last week with, oh, here's some stuff we're looking at putting in. This doesn't mean that it's actually in there. Um, but yeah, they are. They're looking at putting in those dirt bikes. Um, they are putting in, they, they put in like work, I don't know, they're, they, I don't know, like they, they put in like shirts and things, but I don't think these are actually out yet. These are these are things that, that aren't into the game because they're all just test ones. So they're so, just they're showing concept of what some of it is stuff they've implemented and some of its content, but they don't put a change log. Ah, So it's kind of hard. You have to actually be so, paying attention and playing to know. Yeah. And so they put in here stuff that we're looking at, um, you know, they're reworking some things with like the vehicle system and but they don't say what they've actually changed. So that's kind of a weird thing. So most of this, I think, is them saying, here's what we're going to have in a future update. Gotcha. But if you want to check that out, um, then we'll have a link to that. This is their yeah. this is their Hurt World update number 41, but this is not an actual patch. This is just things that we're looking at, um, you know, putting into the game. They, they kind of do it the way that I think it's Rust that does it this way, to where they have... Or maybe it was date. No, it's Rust, I think, where they go through and just have each of the developers for that department kind of like give an update, like a blog post. That's what this is. So some of them are going to be saying, "Here's what we're putting in." Here's some. Here's some of them be saying, "Here's what we're looking at putting in." Yeah. So, yeah, if you're really interested in her world, you can go and uh, there'll be a link on the website, infectionpodcast.com, to get all of that uh, updated information. If you're, you know, if you're actively following that, of course. Yeah. So, anyways, well, yeah, we'll have a link to that. Hurt world. Um, they put in an update, so I figured we might as well mention it. Cool, yeah. Now, Unturned, who actually puts out only stuff when they're doing updates. Which is good. Put on a, yeah, they actually say what they, you know, here's what we did. Uh, so 3.15.1.10.0, um, they added acid spitter zombies. Okay. They they added supply airdrops. Oh, nice. Um, so you can now repair bases with a blowtorch. Um, and they said added friendly slash hostile sentry. So I assume those are people that you'll come across to fight no century i would imagine that's century turrets which would be a um maybe yeah. i mean i don't i don't know they, they they put like what the ids are so i assume if you're going to spawn them in as an admin <laughs> yeah uh, yeah um, i don't know they could be either way but some type of some type of i don't know every time i've heard the word century used like that it tends to be a turret but it does say friendly and hostile which would indicate yeah that's what i was some type of npc or something yeah so i that's a good question so we should have done our research, but then again, it's, I don't know. Turrets. Yeah, it's, it's, <laughs> so, it's, it's, it's turrets or some type of player, but yeah. 
Yep. So those are those are right in the game. Uh, and then they just merely did fixes after that. So they did some improvements and fixes. No, no. Okay. So the new friendly sentries can be used to create a safe public space because they only shoot players who pose a threat for by exa- um, for example, having a weapon drawn. So it is so actually so it's a threat. Yeah. So um gotcha. so well it could be even like a military like a person that's doing the same thing as a turret. So um, on the opposite end of the spectrum, the hostile sentry is much better than the neutral one for interior base defense because it is absolutely merciless. It's definitely a sentry. It's definitely a turret. Okay. It's got to be. So, yeah, so that that is uh, that's that's what that is. And then the air. So this is I mean, I always say this, but this is like a full out survival game. It just looks ah, like it's so free. weird, though. Um, and it's free, by the way, which I don't think a lot of people pay attention to. It's free. Um, yeah. And you can, you, I mean, and the up the pro upgrade is five dollars, um, which I purchased. It's just if they could just tweak the graphics, like I just have a hard time getting past the graphics on it. It's kind of Minecrafty. I don't, it doesn't bother me. It's just it's, I, I haven't it's had even worse than Minecraft. Yes, it's like it is even less. But I think that's that's. Than I mean, here's the thing. There's so many survival games, and they're all looking. They look all looking to do the same thing. The the graphics of that game differentiate it from every other survival game that's out there right now. That's yeah. that's kind of how I see. It. He's just they're, they're, he's trying to be different. The guy, and it was a when he started it. it well, was he a started when he was a little kid, kid. So this was probably sixteen year old. He's a little ability. kid. Come on, give me a break. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Old, you got an old, you old, now, old man over here, so old man Aldridge saying, "Oh, sixteen year old is a little baby." Well, yeah, so, so yeah, he's actually your age. Yes, he is. Yeah, and look at him. Yeah, because I'm, I'm doing a stupid podcast. Fourteen. I'm doing a stupid podcast. So two years ago, he was yeah. sixteen. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm sitting here doing this stupid podcast, and he's over here making bank on this video game. That he's At five dollars a, a pop. <laughs> five dollars a key. Yeah, look who made the right choice, and look who made the wrong choice. Yeah. Um, so that's okay. So, so one thing I wanted to show if you go to the Steam page for this, and I'll put a link in her for Unturned or so, for the thing, yeah, go to Unturned, yep, and then scroll down On to the, the items page? available for this game. Yes, oh, okay, oh, yes, okay. Look at the gun skins, yeah. I think I know where Daybreak has been looking to well, figure I'm out what they need to blow them up. Here we go, this will work, yeah. <laughs> but that totally fits this game because it's a cartoon like yeah. it's a cartoon. Oh, but I, it's I a think cartoon Daybreak's game. like, OK, so this game, what's the most high, highly downloaded uh, survival game on on uh, why on are they Steam? why are they oh, stoned? Why? <laughs> why? Why is Daybreak stoned when they're having this conversation? Well, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, because they're California. It's legal hey, there. man. What kind you know, of game? Like, they're like, okay, so let's do let's do what the most highly downloaded survival game on the internet does, and this is what they do. But now let me tell you, let me tell you something here, Brian. Let me learn you something. Okay. These models look like crap, but it that's the style of the game, so it fits. Look at the jagged edges on this gun, but it yep. doesn't matter because that's the style. That's how it's supposed to look, and that's how it does look. They he has done, and I played this game probably in twenty. Probably early to mid 2014, right when it came out, I had a few friends that were really interested in it. Since the start, he's done exact. He's done exactly what he needs to do to, for this game. Everything is yeah. in line. The right. He's constantly adding new stuff to it, and it's free. Did I mention yep. that it's free? Hello, hello, hello. It's free. There's no no cost. Yep. Just download it. So that's on yeah and, he's, and like he's at like there's clouds and yeah like there's a lot the all the deal. stuff is there it just looks you know this is just the look of the game yeah it's a um it's a low it's a very low graphic high uh high opportunity game that's how i see it so there you go yeah so you're more than welcome free to play early access zombie survival unturned you can go download it it's hard too to it's not it easy the the, yeah, the zombies it's a hard game, game to play are, the, the it is it, it is hard um yeah, there you go. All right, so now Rust, which is another similar thing to what we just went through. Of, you know, they put in here not only things that they're doing. This is each of the developers kind of does their own little blog. Yes. This is common. The next game actually does the same thing too. I like this. So, like, they go through and they talk about the XP um, system changes that they did. Remember, they, they said, if like, if you craft something, um, now they're putting in there, like, in the upper right, right corner, if you craft this, you'll get this much XP from making this item. 
Um, someone was telling me that now high level people are running around new areas, just handing out free things because if people use those things, they will, um, Oh, get, get XP, XP yeah. from Tri all the new people like trickle down, down XP. That's yep. <laughs> that's what we call it. That's essentially yep. what's happening. And Killcam, who uh, turned us on, who's a big Rust player, turned us on to this a few weeks ago and said, "This is a big change for the game." I don't play it. Brian doesn't play it. We are playing it this week. Um, yep. But I mean, said, I played it here and there, but like I just have it's one of those ones, kind of like Ark. It's not a fun game to just. I'm gonna go play this for 15 minutes because yeah. your character is always gonna be dead and never have exactly. Anything. So that so um I, from everything we've heard across Reddit from Killcam who we who we know, um, this is a big thing because it. The, I guess the XP was a was a hard thing to cut. You really had to grind to get XP, and this makes it uh, a little more easier to to. I'm not gonna. I, I want to say farm, but you're not really farming it. Um, cause no. you're crafting the items. But either way, that's what's going on. So that's good stuff. Yep. And so that one thing they've done too is they've been improving the graphics. Um, yep. You know, they've been trying to just make it a more efficient game. They, the one thing they did in this patch is they've optimized the bloom. So it's about 30% faster. Um, they've been working on the, the shaders and everything, just trying to make it because there, it can be a pretty graphic intensive game. And with having more items and more detail on items, like that makes a big impact on the frame rate of the game so if they can get anything more out of this um you know that makes it so that they can put either more items in or more detail on items so it just makes it a better looking game so mm -hmm. um so they have it now to where like with water reflections you can actually adjust the quality of the water reflections um so th that's in the settings the graphics quality settings now um one thing they've done is music is in now so they put in there um it, it says the music is disabled by default but you can go in type music dot enabled space one in your console and it'll enable music why don't they just put a checkbox i i think they'll be doing that <laughs> it says well they're enabling it by default next week i don't know why they just didn't have a checkbox in the settings that would be the easier thing to do yeah hey why don't you go in and type uh go into your uh, app data and find the user info dot any and go in there and modify it make sure game's not open while you're doing it and then you go you got music in the game or add a checkbox yeah but those are two options so and now one thing about this, we'll have a, a link to it. This is Deblog 119, and they have a nice then change log is one thing they've been doing recently. At the very bottom, it actually has a real change log that goes through and lists what has been changed. So, yes. uh, so you can go through because as I was talking about before, a lot of those things they're talking about aren't actual changes in the game. They're either concept art or something like that. So that way you can see, um, like for instance, the laser sight unlocks at 24 instead of 25 you know that's a change they didn't talk about in the blog but yeah. it's a change in the game so a neck shot is no longer considered a headshot like little things like that um so if, if you're really into rust we'll have a link to that so you can go through and see what the changes are um maybe it'll make some more sense to maybe something that's happening in the game as you play it so and the default water so the default water quality is set to one so if you want to have a higher quality water you know, when you go in there, you have to go in the settings to do that. Like they started out at level one. Yeah. So, um, so. next here we got uh, Daisy, Day Z, um, and they kind of do they do the similar thing to Rust, where they've got a they have each of the developers do a little thing. Um, normally Hicks, who is the one that does like the a lot of the main development, his is normally who was in the, here a couple weeks ago. Yeah, Hicks is normally the one who's got a lot of the good stuff to read. Um, so this, the, these first three things were on hotfix. They've been hotfixed to stable. Um, so the first thing is the character gear loss on reconnect. So if you left and then reconnected, uh, you would lose, you would lose your, you could possibly lose your loot. That's been fixed there. Tent lifetime refresh. So the, the tent, uh, the lifetime of the tent was refreshed. And then the position slash orientation of the tent. All three of those things have been, were hotfixed and they've been pushed to stable. The next two things. Uh, our vehicle position uh, orientation, that's in test, and so is the animation slash sync issues. That's in test as well. Now, point six one, which is kind of the update that has brought a lot of life back to this game. Um, here are a few things that they're working on, and they, these are the milestones of uh, 6.61. First thing is the server login queue, which um, is a big deal, especially with, with the, the login queues have always been an issue with the EZ, uh, even from the Arma 2 mod. Um, the next thing is merging of new audio technology from the Arma 3 Eden engine, um, which is 
uh, really cool as well. And uh, some other random things, um, like, you know, they're working on dynamic spawning of the infected, uh, and then, you know, changing how that works, and then the predators or wolves, adding that kind of AI and making sure that works properly in offline mode and all that stuff. So they're always working on some cool stuff there. Um, but, you know, th they've got some goals for 6-1, and... You know, from what we've seen, Brian, you weren't there the night we played. I don't think, but um, no, I was. Yeah, I was gone. It was. Uh, oh, I don't. I don't have the game. So yeah, you actually don't have the game. If it was, uh, if the game was a little, if I remember the controls of the game, um, <laughs> I would have had a little better time, but I did yeah. not. So that was uh, that was unfortunate for me. But that's uh, that's Daisy. Cool. Yeah, and that eventually I'll have to put it on my list for like the next time it's on sale. Yeah. Because for so long, it was like, oh, they're not doing anything with it. I'm not going to buy it. And then now that they're actually working on it, it would be worth it for me to to get into it. So, yeah. Um, so th there's another announcement that No Man's Sky release for PC has been delayed by three days. So this was on the 26th today. Um, and they announced that No Man's Sky is going to be delayed a little bit longer. So, um, yeah, and this is the one where the developer got death threats because of literally death threats yeah yeah initially announcing that this game was going to be delayed there's so much hype around this game and this is that's uh, that's 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 unfortunate there is so much hype yeah. that the only i'm sorry here's here here welcome back to mr pessimist hour there is absolutely no way ryan this game can possibly hold up to its expectations there is not yeah. a chance in hell that this game can hold up to uh, to its expectations. The hype is there has been more hype I think on this game than there was on Fallout 4. There is yep. so much hype. Um so it got delayed and I, I, I and that's the thing is I I I understand that it's going to be you know should be a cool game, but I haven't personally seen why there's so much hype. Like I understand it's cool. I, you know I like I like space survival games, but the thing is, is I've played some other ones that have very similar concepts to them as far as the vastness of the world and everything. Yeah, they'd have to deliver on a much more like I feel like each world is is not auto generated type of a feel. Like you'd really have to pull it out. And so I I've put no expectations on this game. Like that's one thing I've tried to do is not say oh here's what i think it's going to be because i want it to be a surprise for me like I've, I've not been searching for videos on this to try to see gameplay and everything um you know and if they release something that just like man this is awesome then you know i'll be i'll be stoked about it but I, i'm trying not to build it up that much beyond beyond like elite dangerous or something because i don't know how much farther they can go than that other than what they make happen on the worlds themselves yeah. you know like or if they make just the space flight, like feel like when you go somewhere, but if it's, if it's kind of like an auto thing, cause there's only so much you got to think in a world that has billions of stars, right? Um, they can't sit there and program out every single one of these worlds. Like some of it has to be auto. So if they can get that done in a way that feels so natural, they can make it really feel like a huge game without being a huge game. So we'll just have to see what they do. I mean, they've been working on it. So it's going to be August twelfth uh, is when is when it's going to be released on the PC. So. Yes, and the th let the appending storm and brew because it is releasing on August 9th in the U.S. on the P on the PS4 um, and or no on the Xbox I think the Xbox and PS4. It's releasing three days earlier than it is on PC. So. All of the console players are now going to get this game three days earlier than the PC players, and we know that PC players can't handle anything um, and do nothing but complain. So I'm sure we'll have a we'll have a Twitter hashtag that will be trending, and it's going to be a whole thing because, yeah. Well, we'll see. Like after day one, like they have to have this game so polished when they release because but, if it's yeah. not, well, and the, it's plus just going to relieve so much backlash. Plus, there was some rumors that they were borrowed some type of uh, technology without the proper licensing and now that somebody's starting to sue them. So man, I, I have no clue what's going on with this. This is all I'm saying. This game may be fantastic. I'm not trying to say this game is not going to be good, but it can't live up to its hype. It is impossible. Yeah. This is just like, this is like every movie. This is kind of like the independence day movie, the new independence yeah. day movie didn't live up to its hype. Why? Yeah. Because it's a new independence day movie. It's not whatever 
this is constantly the thing that, that, that I talk about. People's first... Here's the thing. With, I, I say this with Call of Duty. Modern Warfare 2 was the first Call of Duty I really, really played and enjoyed. Like, with my friends and everything else. That is yeah. my favorite Call of Duty. Not because it's the best game, but it's because it's the first game that I was able to make those memories with. And yeah. it, obviously, this isn't a sequel, but it just can't live up to what it's, what it's, what it's supposed to be. Nothing ever does. Nothing. When will people learn that? Now that's the thing. The new I've Jurassic not Park seen, sucked. I've not Nobody seen liked it. Ridiculous cutscenes about this. You know, I haven't seen a ton of hype as far as actual gameplay. It's all been people yeah. getting excited about just the game being released. Not that I've seen. Oh, here's what's going to be in the game. Yeah. Like I've seen very little on what's actually going to yeah, be I mean, in the game. Why don't we go talk about the new Ghostbusters? Talk about how you know how how much hype leads up to to this stuff. Because yeah. case in point, it's just, nothing can live up to this hype. When when you put a game up on a pedestal so high, it it will fail every single time. So yeah, I hope I well, hope, I, I hope that's if not the it's situation. awesome. Like I'll for sure get it and, and yeah. play it. But I I can't buy this day one. I really wanted to, but I I just can't. There's no way I can buy this game day one now. Well, and I kind of learned my lesson with um, the, <laughs> Shib- the, Sh- the Black Plague or whatever it's called. <laughs> Yeah, um, the Black Death. Black Death, yeah. I kind of learned, you know, because there was a lot of hype behind that. Oh, look, yeah, this is going to be... Nothing just... like this game, though. Yeah. It, but then again, this know, is not early access. This is a AAA, like, real deal release. This is no early access, no green light, no alpha. This is a real deal, you know, And I would rather release. have that be what it is, like a yes. full release, because I, I kind of learned my lesson with that of, man, that game, just, there's nothing. Like, I... I I bought it thinking, oh, there's going to be so much to do. I'm going to run around. I'm going to play with people. And then, like, I've never run into another person in the game. Yeah, I can see this turning into, and I'm going to say it, a Titanfall situation. Where... Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You're, <laughs> you're calling it. That's your prediction. You need a little notebook. Uh, yeah, I need, I need a black book or something to write down all these predictions. Somebody mark that down. I'm, pre- I, I'm, I'm not predicting. I'm saying I wouldn't. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm gonna predict. You gotta predict. No, I'm you predicting predict that this predict. is <laughs> predict or not predict. Would judge Brian Aldridge. I'm predicting that this is going to be a Titanfall one, because that okay. game I got screwed into buying that too. Hey, oh, I know. It, it, God, the I, COD I was, killer. It's better than Battlefield. Better than Call of Duty. Played it like six times. The game sucked. Nobody else played it. It was awful. Now the same thing. Yeah, Titanfall I two. I just listened to you guys talk while you played it, and I was like, I'm not gonna. Yeah, and then that. Titanfall two is the same thing. Everybody's oh, Titanfall two. No, it's gonna be great. It's gonna kill COD. It's gonna kill Battlefield. It's not. It's not going to. It's gonna be just as bad as the first one. I'm sorry. I'm so yeah. sick of these PC people. <laughs> they, 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 every game is like this. Everything is the next. Every game is the best. Ninety-eight percent of the games flop, and they just don't learn their lessons. Just yeah, realistically, bring the game well, we, back and to we've, the level. We've got into this. This it used to be, and so I can pull some of my like. Here's how it used to be back in the day, like because I was around when PC games first. Back in came. my day, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like when PC games started, like I was there, right? You know, I mean, it was a little bit before your time. Uh, yeah, just, but just I remember. A a little bit. I remember my friends and I pooling together and putting in enough money to buy Wolfenstein 3D on floppy disk, right? Oh, yeah. Um, you know, I was in, I think, junior high at the time or something, and we Duke all Nukem. pitched in together and bought Wolfenstein 3D, which I know is illegal, but we were junior hires, and that's the Wait, money what, we had. What's, oh, oh to, what, to share the disk around like that? Yeah, we all oh. we because we we had a we had a game. Catalog oh, so you burnt so you, it out of the game catalog, and then did you make did you burn it to a bunch of other floppies or just pass? The yeah, like I don't know if we copied it or yeah, we just installed it, duplicated but, it. Yeah, we duplicated it. Um, and so you know, so we like that was the early days of PC gaming, and like there was a title would come out, and you would have enough time to play that title to death because. There weren't that many games and you had commander keen you had wolfenstein 3d you had you know some of these but you would have enough to where you could play at least a month constant on this game before another game was even mentioned wow yeah. and, and, and and you know nowadays like every other day a title is being released yeah i mean i mean look at my my library i'm almost up to a thousand games and there's tons of games i don't have yeah and it's just, we just i just don't understand why we make like every Every game the <laughs> they co- called you out on burning it to a floppy. <laughs> uh, you said you get to burn it to a floppy. Yeah, okay, ha 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 ha. 
And she, now I lost my train of thought. I don't even remember what the hell I was going to okay. say. Um, you said every single one of these games. Yeah, every single one of these games is the same thing. Everything is better than everything is better than every other game ever released. Like No Man's Sky. Oh, this has never been done. This is going to be better than every other game. It's like it's the same. It's the same thing for every game. Every like somewhat popular game that comes out. It, yeah. It's all. It's always better than everything else beforehand. And then it comes out and it flops. And then people go up in arms. Oh well, this is ridiculous. It's not ridiculous. This is what you set this you set yourself up for failure. Well, and we've gotten into this because we're expecting games to be released so often and people have such a short memory with games. I mean, there's so many games that I mean there there there's the the few like Ark and like Rust from you know, what were smaller developers that really took off. But then there's so many of them that I mean, like look at Miscreated and all these other games. There's a lot of time and, and money an effort being put in to make those games. Yeah. And if, you know, like, just like the black death, I mean, when I went and played weeks after, after it was launched and there's two people playing it, that's a problem. Like how much money do they put in to have two people playing on the live servers? Yeah. It's an issue. Yeah. And so like, we've just gotten this, this attitude of, all right, we're going to, we expect so many games and it takes time to make a real good game. Yeah. Uh, and I think because so many are coming out that if it's not perfect, like people don't make their money back out. So they're now they're just kind of tossing out junk games left and right and seeing which one stick. It's like throwing stuff against the wall. All right. What's going to stick? OK, then we'll kind of continue on that one. They're throwing it out so early that you're not getting, you know, you're not getting the best game it could be. You're getting, you know, all right, what can we afford to put out quickly? OK, is that a good concept? All right. Now we'll develop it. And they're not putting out the good polished games anymore. So hopefully this is a good polished game you know, since it's not an alpha release. I think alpha has really tainted us. No, yeah, I, I, I don't know, man. I just, I've given up. <laughs> I, I've just, <laughs> I've just given up. I, I, I can't take it anymore. It's so frustrating. So yeah. we'll see. I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the game. I'm just, I'm ready. I'm readying myself for possible failure because that's um, just unfortunately what we've had to do time and time and time and time and time and time again. It seems like it, it never ends. So that's uh, that's No Man's Sky. That, that's a real positive twist on the show. <laughs> so here's a game that um, that I got because it was recommended to me. Yeah. Uh, but Life is Feudal, and we've talked about this before. It is a very difficult game. Um, but if you're into a game that just is a grind and like, you feel like you're getting real achievement from playing it. Like it's, it's not easy to do something. Um, this would be a good game for you, but they put out version 1.1.2.1, which just has a lot of fixes in it. They've done some, um, new features for it, but, um, mostly like they're reworking the train textures, um, you know, updating things. So th this is, this is a pretty big patch, but I think most of it is, is fixes for this. So, but yeah, I would. Uh, I if you don't have it, I would actually recommend. How much is it? it let me, that's what. That's actually what I'm. Come on, Brian, doing. hurry up. <laughs> Life is futile. I'll test my. Test your test your keyboard. So it's thirty nine ninety nine right Ooh. now, and I actually gave a copy of this away. I think in the last month or two. Yeah, okay. Um. So, but yeah, this is it's 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 a fun game, but the, and it's like a medieval open world survival game with crafting. Um, and actually my tip of the week is going to be on this game. So this, uh, but it is, it is a really fun game. It was recommended to me and I, I played it on a stream for a while. Uh, and it is a very difficult game to really get going on. Um, but they are still, I mainly wanted to show they are still developing this game. Um, they put out, yeah, the 1.1.2.1, 1. 1. which was a bunch of fixes. And then they put out a hot fix after that of, uh, 0.2.2, which actually, because they had fixed something with um, movable objects, they had it to where people could put something inside of an object and then it would make it not movable anymore. So they fixed that so that it wouldn't, people wouldn't be able to block other people's movable objects. So like if you had put up um, like some, something that you could usually pick up and place somewhere else, like, you know, a stand or something that you could take down and put up somewhere else, like people, someone could come and stick a log in that. And then it would no longer be placeable. Hmm. That's so, you know, you, you couldn't you couldn't like move it and then move it somewhere else, right? Yeah. 
Um, so they, they fixed that because people were, I guess you could probably troll people a little bit doing that. And then they put out another little hot fix, which just fixed a connectivity issue to servers. So but this game was released November 17th of 2015. So it is less than a year old. That's great. <laughs> but it, it's got a full season system. It's got spring, fall, winter, you know, it's, it's got the four seasons that actually change in the world. It's, it's, it is an amazing game. It's online, but it is it is a very diff- if you're looking for a very difficult survival game, this is the, a really good game. You mean if you're looking for a survival game? Yeah. Um, if, you're, if you're if you're listening to this podcast and you're actually looking for a real survival yeah. game. Um, so Brian, we've been memified again by Gadlaw, and this is <laughs> this is it. I predict that No Man's Sky will be the new Titanfall. That is my prediction, and now it's on evidence on Twitter. So nice. I, I've been wrong plenty of times in the past. I, mean, I can accept being wrong again. I really don't care. So. <laughs> <laughs> See if you take bold stances, eventually you'll be right. <laughs> so, as long as you're extreme in one way or the other, you will be right eventually. Exactly. So we'll see. Um, you really recommend for forty dollars? You, I, I, you know, you've talked about this, but have you played it enough for it where for it to be, you know, no. that you could recommend it forty dollars for somebody? I, I don't, I don't think I'd recommend it at forty dollars, but I think. So what's the price? Twenty dollars? They had a sale. I think if they did twenty dollars, if it's a game that you're willing to put time into, okay, it's a game that you could put serious and really get your money out of that twenty dollars. Like you could really put serious time into it. Um, it's got like a land claiming system and just the building system. Like everything is definitely a grind, um, and it doesn't seem to be as much focused on PvP as like what Rust is. Yeah, um, but it, it's one where. You can terraform land and and like you actually build a farm and you build everything and it's, it, it'd be like a true survival game and so I don't recommend it for forty bucks but I, I would recommend it if you see it go like on a fifty percent off sale and you're really looking for a survival game that you can just kind of play by yourself or with some other people and and just have a game that's not going to run out <laughs> like you're always going to have something to do in it like this is a game to get gotcha. Speaking of bundles, it's just a very difficult game to play. Yeah. Um, okay. So, do you have? Did you you covered all the updates, right? Because I was gonna pivot. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, speaking of bundles, somebody mentioned the bundles. Um, I've given you. We've given you the notice. Uh, we'll give it to you. I'll give it to you one more time if you weren't paying attention. Humble Bundle Monthly. This month's bundle is you have nine days. It's twelve dollars. So. You have nine days. We will be playing Call of Duty Black Ops Three Multiplayer Starter Pack. Two weeks from now, that so not this week, the week after, we'll be playing that as the game of the week. So, you have your notice. Be here. We're going to be playing the starter pack. Um, you've got nine days to, to buy the game. It's $12, um, which, you know, hope, it, hopefully you can swing uh, for, for the game. So, I believe we're playing that on the, uh, on the 5th of August. I'd have, to, I'd have to look back to confirm that, but I believe it is the... Uh, yeah, August 5th, Call of Duty Black Ops 3. So we'll be playing it. You can get it for $12. You play it once, and think about it like going out to the movies. Um, so that's how you do that. And, um, <laughs> I mean, that, that's how kind of how I justify it. So there you go. Um, yeah, and, and that's the thing with Humble Bundle is you never know what other games they're going to give away. Yeah. Uh, you know, so you may get, I think, with The Forest. Like, that was worth it for me just for that game alone. Yeah, definitely. Um, so. So this is interesting. Life is Strange, which um, I got. I don't remember how. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I the got is, episode I, one. I bought episode one, which is kind of disappointing that now. Well, I, I have an episode. I don't know what episode or episodes I have, but episode one is now free to play, which is a very interesting marketing tactic. That makes sense for this type of game. It's got it five makes, episodes. It makes total. perfect sense. It, this is like literally like the def. This is like a micro. This is like an like a real life microtransaction because you, you're going to get it on the first one. You're going to play the first one. You're going to go, I want more. And you have to buy episodes two through five. If you, you know, obviously if you want to continue the story. So they are totally doing a, uh, like a real deal. I mean, it's, it's a great marketing term. You have five games. You give away the first one for free and people may buy the next four because you, you know, because of the one. So, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting. Now, the frustrating thing for me is. I since I bought episode one, like I wish they would have given me something, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like I, I bought episode one and now they're giving it away for free and I don't get, you know, it's like 
I don't get anything anything for it. No, but which, which is the same thing Team Fortress did. I mean, I bought Team Fortress Two. Yeah, and then it went free to play. So kind of yeah, whatever. I mean, if you want to play this, uh, get it. It's the first episode's free, and then you can pay. And right now they have forty five percent off two through five. So you can get all of them for ten ninety nine at the moment. So you, one good thing to do is to play episode one. Yep. If you decide you really like it, then you just go pay ten ninety nine and you can get the rest of it. Exactly. There you go. That's uh, yeah, that's simple. Which they should be doing this more often with with games like this. Just release, especially these story driven games, to where you can play through that initial story yes, definitely and get yourself hooked. And it's if you look genius. at the it's absolutely Overall, genius. It's overwhelmingly positive. Overwhelmingly positive with fifty-four thousand plus reviews. It's, that shows you it's a really good game. Yeah, that's not. That is not. A, yeah, every game is not playing it. That is a. I'm not going to say it's a rare breed, but it's not. It is not common for that. Yeah. For that now, PHPCK be. did point out that with TF2, I did get a founder's hat for having paid. Oh, for, for the having game. paid for it. Okay, interesting. But for me, I could care less about hats. Like. Oh, that's the only uh, point of playing TF2. So you can have yeah, hats so on hats on hats on hats. I, I could care less about hats. So, oh. I, I, you know, when after they, they changed that and started going with just everything else. Well, I, whole, I mean, the game is so old now that it, it's only it, it completely runs on people buying skins and, and trying to screw 10 year olds out of their skins. <laughs> yep. <laughs> that's that's essentially what TF2 has, has come to at this point. Acting like you're well, somebody I used else. To play, to I used to play them. that game with my wife back before you're we married. TF2 is a fun we, game, but it's it's yeah. it become nothing but screaming. It's because it's a it's a free to play game, so it becomes nothing but. I I, I don't. I mean, I don't. I'm not, this is not grading anybody, but it, it's a bunch of children playing it. Yeah. And and I feel but, bad saying that because I was in that situation. A child when you when it, but that's playing a, that. It, it, yeah, but that's the thing. Like that's why I have it. I have a kind of a conflict of interest. Like yes. I'm not, but well, I'm not like one of those children screaming. No, but I, but, no, but I wasn't like I wasn't looping back, you know, rap into my microphone because I'm not yeah. a because that that's I, I wasn't doing that. But that's unfortunately what a lot of that game is is people mic spamming like, like Gary's mod. It's no different. So there you go. <laughs> BHBCK says you got to scream back, Nick. Yeah, of course. Yeah, waste my time here screaming at a. 10 year old while his mom delivers Tostino's pizza rolls or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> great, great use of my time. I was watching, like, uh, you know, well, so Nick and I were watching cringe. Videos. Do you really want to do? <laughs> I'm not going into detail about that. But, but I, I saw this other one where it's like, it was like um, anonymous cringe, you know? It's like there's some little kid who's whispering. He's got an anonymous mask and he's whispering into the microphone so that his mom doesn't hear him and scream at him for recording something on the, on his phone or his computer. Just, it makes it, it makes me laugh. It's, it's great. The yeah. internet now. Do you want to mention anything else about the the video? No, that was hilarious though. <laughs> if, if only we could live stream that and not have half half of the people in the world hate us. No, we could totally stream that. Oh, that's a we great could, idea for a show, Brian. It was, it was hilarious. We could make so I much more th- money than we do on infection. I almost threw up. <laughs> yeah, like we were the, watching the real food deal. Review cringe. <laughs> we were watching food review cringe. Like, Brian, we gotta save this. Come on, this is the okay. show. We gotta save this. Come on, show. let's wrap this thing up. Um, okay, we got so one more go story, and then I'll do the, got, ge- the the. Well, then we'll get, we'll do get one more game giveaway, yes. and then yeah, do the, your last story, and then all right. So <laughs> we get out of here. Unreal now has, now has an issue tracker, and so uh, hey, hey, they have an great. official issue tracker, so you can see. And this is the Unreal Engine. So if you're doing any kind of development. Or and he's running across an issue. Um, they have a nice issue tracker that I think they released today, if I remember correctly. What is it on? Uh, hmm? Is it on their? Is it their own proprietary? So it's issue, or is it- yeah, issues.unrealengine.com. So Ooh. this is something that they're doing. Not like in the look. They were doing everything with um, GitHub before. So why are now they using you have Trello? Why isn't everybody using Trello? Trello because is this, perfect. This is this you can. This, this is made for much larger number of bugs trello the problem is is if you have a limited list of bugs that works um this they're looking at very specific bugs so okay. you can track it later like putting in a specific issue number okay and gotcha. following that issue like it's just more extensive okay because i was going to say trello is fantastic so yeah i mean trello would work great but i with this the way that they're doing it i think they're getting big enough that they kind of outgrew doing something like that Fun. So they have their That's own cool. um, actual issue tracker now that is for them. Well, it doesn't so. end up like daybreaks. 
<laughs> stuff not resolved yeah. for well, that's 11 the thing months. is daybreak doesn't even run their own issue tracker so yeah there you go whatever <laughs> all right so let's go ahead and go do the last one this is the same thing if you just put exclamation yes. point raffle into chat this will enter you and um this time let's do do you want to do spec ops the line Does that, sound that like works a good one? yeah spec up the line it's a good game Okay, so this is, yeah, a little bit different games for each one. So Spec Ops line, if you put exclamation point raffle into chat, that'll enter you. Kind of the similar thing before. That seemed to work pretty well. So if it continues to work, we'll have to um, yes. definitely keep this way and not do it the old way. Because this is a little bit simpler, and it seemed like I can't see the list of names, so I don't know that they're dropping off. No, it's, I'm sure it's working fine. So here we go. Current players. Who's currently playing these games? Uh, this is H1Z1. This is combined of Just Survive and King of the Kill. Currently playing that 10,015, the 24-hour peak for that 12,534, and the 7-day peak 13,513. Playing Just Survive alone, currently playing that, uh, 2,737, the 24-hour peak 3,486, and the 7-day peak 4,033. Playing King of the Kill, currently 7,278. The 24-hour peak for that, 9,048. And the 7-day peak, 9,480. So very close to the 7-day uh, peak is close to the 24-hour peak there, which is interesting. How about ARC? Uh, these numbers are actually surprisingly low for ARC. I don't know what's going on. Uh, currently playing at 27,628. The 24-hour peak, 41,490. And the 7-day peak, 46,726. Brian, that number's been close to like 70,000. Uh, just Sometimes. Not that I, long ago. Like last week, I'm I pretty sure it was like 68,000. So. I think there's a summer lull going on right now because I've noticed in a lot of things, it seems like numbers are kind of down. And I think it's a lot of it's because of people just getting distracted with summer. Personally, and that's just that's just my guess. I can't base that on anything. Well, that, but that's that's what I've noticed. That's interesting. Um, so I guess we'll keep, keep an eye. It seems like it's, it fluctuates every week. Still, that's a pretty high number. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my miscreated numbers didn't update, um, but currently playing miscreated is 541 players. The 24-hour peak for that is 708, and the 7-day peak is 834. I don't know why that graphic didn't update. Um, that's pretty odd. So that's current players, um, and we'll, you know, we'll we'll keep track of all that stuff. Seven uh, miscreated is still still up there. You know, 7-day peak almost 900. No, actually, not almost eight, almost that's 850. A, um, yeah. But but it's, but it's almost it's 540, 550 playing right now. So that's not a which is which used to be multiple times what its high was. Yes, exactly. So you before, know, it's, so I guess it's it's held it's held some people on. Um, and I I think that you know the, the, if they continue to put out another update after this and kind of keep building on those numbers, they just need to continue putting out content and updates. Um, yeah. You know, and they'll they'll just keep growing that crowd. Like it may never it will never be an arc, and then it'll never be a rust. But, you know, I, th I think if they can get it to where there's like a thousand people playing consistently, I think that for this game would be a win. As do I. I agree 100 so. percent. All right. So do we want to go ahead and do uh, tip of the week? Sure. That works. All right. So tip of the week's where I go through and I'll give you either a tip on a specific game or maybe survival gaming in general. Um, so this week we're doing one specifically on Life is Fetal. So this is tip of the week. All right, so for this tip, life is futile. I wanted to go into a little bit of detail of something that will save you a lot of time if you're if you're playing this game seriously. Uh, you know, we talked about it during the show, but this is a game that can be a huge time sink, a huge amount of grind. Yeah, but it, there's a lot of different things you can do in this game. So I wanted to talk about building a monument. Um, the monument allows you to be able to return home regardless of how far you wander away. So um, if you're able to to build a house and build a monument, monument, you can wander around the map and just go somewhere that's you know like a, a half day's trek away, um, and then you can instantly you, you actually pray is what it says. You pray and then it actually brings you back home. Um, so it's kind of like a teleport back. Uh, to make the monument, you need 20 hardwood billets, 
uh, 100 bones, five shaped rocks, and 40 prepared herbs. So if you're going to get the hardwood, you can get those from the high quality oak trees. Um, one thing you'll notice is that trees have different quality levels. Uh, so when you're picking where your home is going to be, you may want to take a look at the type of trees, what the quality level of the trees are that are in the area that you're looking at building at. Um, because to make a pretty big uh, building and, and really grow, you're going to need a lot of trees and higher quality ones will bring, give you a lot more resources back. So um, if you get a high quality oak, uh, you should be able to get the hard the hardwood that you need for that. The bones you can get from killing different animals. Um, the rocks can be gathered with a pickaxe. So you'll have to go through the process of creating a pickaxe for that. And then um, you can gather the herbs with a sickle. So as well, you'll have to create a sickle for that. One thing is, is the herbs can be difficult to see because of all the grass and things on the ground. Mm -hmm. So one trick that you can do is to turn your grass setting to the lowest setting and it will, it will make it easier to see because it'll take out all that fake stuff that you can't really gather and make it so that you can see the real gatherable objects. So in the settings, turn your grass setting all the way to the bottom and then you'll, you'll see the items that you can gather will stand out more. So um, that is a trick to building a monument. Once you get those items, you'll be able to build the monument and it'll be kind of like a home base that you can port back to. So it'll allow you to, to wander away and, and not have to worry so much about being able to find where you built. So, cause it is a pretty big world um, and it's not big open areas. There's a lot of trees, a lot of things. So um, that is my life is futile tip of the week. Cool. Thank you, Brian. Yep. Very good stuff there. Remember not, not all trees are created equal. That's what I learned nope. from, from the tip of the I week. I want to get the high quality ones. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Only that. We have the highest quality pixels for our trees. Yep. Um, all right. We want to roll and we'll see what's going yeah. on. Yep. Yeah. All right. So um, let's go ahead and let me make sure. All right. So for this winner, it was Kill Cam. Kill Cam. Cool. So Kill Cam, congratulations. I will send you a link with the, um, and what I did is just left the raffle open. So people that entered before would still be in there and that, but it won't let the person who won the first one. Ah, re-enter so yeah. we'll have to decide if we want to continue to do that yeah, i don't know about we'll that i feel like you got to be here the whole show to win i feel like somebody could tune out but we'll we'll, well, well but check. that's the thing is the yeah that's true so yeah. we'll we'll discuss that i just yes. did it that way i otherwise i can reset it right after the first one yeah, that'll probably work better so we'll we'll discuss that the pros yes. and cons and and figure that out so that kill cam he's been here the whole time so yes definitely um and of course another quick note um well Reminding you tonight, or not tonight, this week's game night, Friday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, twitch.tv forward slash landgun44. He'll be live with Rust. Brian will be there. I'm sure some other uh, people will be there. A lot of people have Rust. I hope uh, uh, some of our Rust folks can can stop by. I, unfortunately, will not be there um, unless a wedding gets canceled in the next four days, which is not very likely. You, you can always pray that she gets cold feet. <laughs> yeah, I can help. One, one can hope. Actually, I'd rather yeah. get paid, but um, so um, yeah, that's gonna do it. Um, Brian, where can people find you online? Any any last words? Yeah, if you want to find me at Boise Computer on Twitter, uh, or you can go to Bite of Tech. That's with an I, biteoftech.com. Um, that has a link to everywhere else that I am. Uh, you can find me at Boise Computer on GitHub, all kinds of fun places. There's links to all that on on my uh, my blog, and make sure you definitely go to our website. Um, fictionpodcast.com has a link to our discord it has a link to our steam group uh, it's a great place to link up with other people uh, maybe people that you hear the names of um, while we're doing the show uh, if you'd like to play some games with them come jo jump in our discord and join our uh, our group and you'll be able to, to see those people so very good all right thank you very much brian we'll see you next week <clears throat> um yeah uh, i want to just quickly uh tell it on the discord if you join that check out the music bot channel and we, we i really want some feedback if people think it's a, something useful to have or not so it can happen the discord there's a link on the website it's infectionpodcast.com uh, of course our twitter's at infection cast subscribe to us on youtube uh all the regular stuff and of course we do the show live every tuesday night 7 p.m eastern right here on our twitch channel twitch.tv forward slash infection podcast Alrighty, folks, that is going to do it for episode 80 of Infection, 80 whole episodes of Infection. Uh, my name is Nick Craig, at Nicholas M. Craig is my Twitter. That's going to do it. We'll see you next week for Infection. Have a great week, everybody.